Sharks. Uh, Holding the Sharks. Mom is missing the uh, fish background. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mom. I'm, on my, I'm, I'm using my uh, my <laughs> cell phone right now. I usually have my uh, my laptop, but I'm not near it <clears throat> right now. I got, you know, gloves and paint and stuff, so I didn't want to mess with the laptop. But uh, I have to throw that back on for you next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the streams are starting across the cosmos. Let's keep going with it. Thank you so much, Tribe, for your patience. Thank you so much for your support. It's immense. We're still going live. I'm going to go ahead and put some hold music on real quick, just because when we're going live, it's going to be a little disorientating uh, because we're coming in midstream. So if you want to take a moment, take some breath, send some balance and energy into the message, that would be awesome. You know, send the vibration across the space. As you can see, we're swimming upstream, but we're power swimmers. You know, it's it's a it's a wild journey, but uh, I'm along for the ride. So let's go ahead and let me just cue this. Let's just take a, a brief break. Here's some nostalgia. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. They tried to bury us, but we're seeds. <laughs> okay, wow. You know, when you're pushing through these pipelines, man, like, wow, there's a lot of energy coming through. So let me check everything real quick. Woo! I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull that one off. It was like, yo, we got everybody back here on the switchboard. We need to switch the street to another the state, and you need to toggle this and type in that. And I'm like, yo, I'm just coming and deliver that juice. Uh, but you know what? It's always been like that. The more that goes on, just the more I'm amped up to come into the space and actually deliver for this tribe. Wow. Like it's been a minute. It's been a minute for us to broadcast across the cosmos. This is also tribe vibes. It was actually a couple weeks ago for us. You know, it's still happening. Uh, the biggest question has been, you know, where is Seven Bomar? I am here. So give me a quick minute. Let me look at things. Let me see if everything is on point. Let me see. Let me let them know. Okay, we got it. <laughs> to be continued on support. I have to get on them on Monday. Be like, okay, listen, we can't play around like this. All right, so I'm looking at YouTube and, you know, everybody Plus, is excited know, over happening. there. Okay, it's happening. Boom, you will hear a little reverb. So, woo! <laughs> wow, can I get some love? Like, or can we get some love? Like, <sighs> Sometimes, you know, when you're coming into this, you expect things to be a certain way. And then when it goes another way, you just got to roll with the punches. So this is what we've already done. We've already announced to everyone that, you know, that uh, they could go for that round of that love that we always share inside of the space. Let me go ahead and let support go. I don't know. Y'all gone. Get out of here. You know, <laughs> we'll talk later. 
And uh, okay, so we are here this evening for something massive. Like we are here to to really also summarize a fantastic series that we put together: how to exit the matrix. Actually, the the the, the real title was how to enter and exit the matrix. I saw somebody already getting on that. It was like exit, and then where do we go? You know what I mean? It's like it was a good title. It was a good title. Exit in the matrix is possible for sure. But we also going to go on a uh, on an even uh, broader journey to really understand the history of occultism. Uh, within this space and time in order to enable our power and our ability, especially when we need it most. Let me see here. Okay, good. I'm up there. So I'm counting on my moderators to to govern these sound systems. Uh, let me make sure that they in place because we are broadcasting everywhere. Uh, I still didn't see nothing on the uh, Instagram side, but it's supposed to be over there. So we'll, you know, we'll cross our fingers on that. I got to see this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the lines here. <sighs> Let me get a little bit of water. Let me get ready to warm him up because there, you know, as there, there can be no delays. Also feels great to be forward on YouTube. And uh, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go right in on this. So the, the big question, you know, where is Seven Bomar and what is going on? And this is just for that, that public side of secret energy, you know, social media networks. And, you know, I'm, I'm constantly gracing the space with something, but there has been uh, somewhat of a dry spell. There has been really nothing like crickets going on, but I would trust that everyone will understand by now that, you know, this is infinite. There is definitely no giving up. And if you don't see me for a moment, that means I'm working on something big. You know, there's no, there's really no substitute for time. I'll say that again. There's no substitute for time. So wherever time is spent, like every single hour of my day has an allocation. And when I think about like, well, not think, but when I'm, when I'm in action and I'm seeing like, okay, I can, I can get this done in an hour. I can get this done in three hours. I'm really cautious these days, especially about where I'm spending the time because I still know that we must deliver. Like we have a massive projection that we began and we've put a lot of energy and intention into this projection and it must continue. But to, to do that, you know, it's like we're living in wild times, right? Like I know big time oligarchs that don't have money right now. I know uh, uh, corporations that have been up for 20, 30 years have shut their doors. And, 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 you know, in all of this secret energy is still plowing through and we're still delivering. Like it was just so beautiful again to see in the introduction how many beings have actually made it here to Costa Rica on their own journeys, but also respectively all around the world to a place inside of their consciousness where they're starting to wake up, they're getting it or waking up even more and it's becoming more and more clear. Like I can definitely say even for me, it's becoming more and more clear this, this, this wisdom and how to apply it. And that's what I'm here to actually share this evening. I'm here to share again, like the, the summation of some very powerful insights about our energetic field, how the world functions and, and the mechanics or celestial mechanics, if you may, uh, that, that make everything work and, when we understand what we're doing and how we're doing it, we can shape and form and fashion our future. And when we can also see how it's being manipulated and how it's being used against us, we can actually choose to disconnect from that and actually just ground back into ourselves and really see that, you know, the, <laughs> I'll say that uh, uh, for sure, uh, I've come to discover the, a lot of the, the controversies that happen around what is the shape of this, uh, this specific, specific dimension, is it flat or is it round, just comes from having to understand uh, what things look like on a different dimension, right? So when a torus or a donut goes into the fourth dimension, it looks like a sphere. So even the whole act of this new world order to make us think that this is all shaped like a sphere is merely an act to let everyone become a part of a fourth dimensional construct because in a fourth dimensional construct, time does not work the same way. So in a sphere, things don't work the same way as it would on a flat plane. And what that creates is a space of instant manifestation, virtually instant manifestation, a way to even nullify time, love it or hate it. So that's really the technologies that we're working with and so as we're grounding into this space because you know we're just figuring certain things out and just really discovering ourselves there's beings that have been in this space for 
a countless period of time that already know about themselves and already know about this space. And so it's just great that we have guys in these times that have shielded us all the way up until this point to give us the opportunity to learn and to know what our parents know. Like, man, sh I can only say that the, the greatest thing that we have is really our ancestry and our connection. Like if we haven't had that ripped away from us and if we can still respect and acknowledge that, the power of our elders, our ability to actually continuously overcome and triumph over and over again, even death. They say even through death, that's the DNA will just carry you on to your with your consciousness and into the next space. So I'm just jumping in. I actually would even like about five minutes just to, you know, to catch up with with everything. Like I did come in on the technical. I have something very powerful to deliver. I didn't come in here shucking and jiving. Not that I ever do. I also wanted to let everybody know that's tuning in that hasn't heard from us in a while to know that March 22nd is the official beginning of the year. That is based on the calendar of the body. So we go into this process that's called Easter or Easter. It's the choosing of the Easter. This just means that you're choosing the energy that you are going to be with for the next term. And those terms are somewhat unidentified unless you knew the celestial calendar. So it's not just one year, it's actually one entire circumference of a cycle. And so right now, as you can see, as we've been talking about that, you know, things are picking up. <laughs> and 2022 with all of its numerical synchronicities is promising to be the most brilliant year yet as far as creating massive awakenings. Let's just put it like that. And it, hasn't really desisted at this point. So we can tell that something's going on. Now, I'll also say that you can always really base what's about to happen in a month based on what goes on in at least the first three days of when the new moon starts. You know, like right now, actually the, the new moon is starting, right? So it's like a way that, you know, you can look at a plant that's growing on, on the new moon around that time and, and you could see certain things about it. And then you can say, imagine what this is going to be like during the full moon you can even measure pretty much how much more growth you're going to get it means that you know you have your timing right if things are going in the direction that you want them to so if you're happy right now because you're actually in uh in the build this evening and you made it and it's happening it broadcasts on that side for you then know that things are, are going to get at least 30x you know by the time that we reach full moon cycle and we go again into this new year as they, they start off with the spooky little ash wednesday where they painting black crosses on everybody's forehead like i'm about to show today you know just this culture man like we really this english culture is is not really w what we want and and that has a lot to do with why the words don't often manifest the things that we want. But what I'm here to do is I'm here to bring a far more superior level of awareness. It kind of usurps all the criticals that you could be doing with your language and doing with your diet and doing with every damn thing that's telling you that, hey, you need to do this or else. What, we going to hell? Is this Christianity again? Like, you need to eat this or else. And you know, everybody tell you, you should eat this, should eat that. You, you got this piece of lettuce with some, uh, uh, I don't know, a cantaloupe juice sprinkled on it. And that's, you know, that's dinner. And then, then they talk about you supposed to run into a whole uh, uh, army and, and, and be, uh, be up all night uh, praying and all this kind of stuff. Like, wait a minute, man, who's running your life? So this is, there's something that's, that's why uh, one of the running titles was the, the word that controls or rules them all. And words are, of course, worlds. And so we're talking about the world, the form of consciousness that rules them all, that usurps all of that extra monkey mind stuff that often has us for sure, you know, on balance at times, you know, you got to do something. You can't, you know, just eat whatever you want and think whatever you want. You got to have some type of discipline in order to, to be able to, to understand how to work with your mind and your consciousness and, and, and how to change habits and things like that. But you know, once, once that's complete, you still need to realize that that same mechanism that could have been freeing you could now become another trap. And that's what I've seen on my journey too, is like, you know, the same things that sometimes were liberating me, if I took them too far, if I took it too literal, et cetera, if I just made it a part of every single thing and made everything depend on it, then it often came crashing down on me. And I would say that for sure that we would always seek refuge only in something that is unbreakable. And so what I'm here to build on this, this evening or morning, depending on where you're at, or day, depending on where you're at, 
is I'm here to talk about the unbreakable, what always is, what always will be, and what if you identify with, because it is definitely identified with you, then you will inherit all of these gifts of eternity. So here it is. I'm just going to turn on some beats real quick. I'm going to center myself in, shake myself off, because again, like I went through the technical, technical, uh, I'm glad I had the opportunity to stick in that and make sure that we can connect with everyone this evening. But fools rush in, as I always say, because in this case, this is very potent knowledge and awareness. And, you know, I just don't want to feel the pressure and be under the gun just trying to jump right into this. Like, uh, I know I need to have respect for how I came, was coming in on this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask for everyone to take a, a few breaths. I'm going to turn on some breaths. Uh, you'll just hear the breaths. Take a few breaths. Realize that you know, you're not in that place that you were in before. Like if you had something going on in your mind, there was something happening earlier today, you know, there's always those points that happen in the day and then it just gets you going. You know, you feel a little bit of twinge of anxiety. And then sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't finalize or fix itself before you're already in on something new. And then you're feeling that, oh man, what, what's going on? Oh yeah, that. And then, you know, you revisit that again in your mind, anxiety builds back up again. And so this is the, of course, the distraction because today, if you have any of that going on, you're, you're going to be able to, uh, uh, to remove it because today you're going to be able to, to, to receive what does really fix all of those problems. As we said, the word that controls them all. So let's do that. Let's listen to these breaths. Let's take a few breaths. Let's get ready to receive this message. Let's clear our minds from everything else that we've been experiencing and everything else that's been going on for these last few days, this last month, whatever. And let's just really, really honor our time and our presence here. So here we go. Let me go ahead and get these four count breaths going on. All right, let's see, there we go. There's some audio on some four count breaths right here. Let's try this. All right, so we're just gonna take some breaths. Slow the train down for a moment. <laughs> Let everybody board the train and actually get ready to go on this journey, this galactic spaceship that we love to boot up. So let's go ahead and do that. Just taking a moment.
Wow. Okay. That feels so much better. I feel like I've actually caught up with my, my words. <laughs> First and foremost, uh, as we come into the space, you know, we can understand that these are very serious times. I wanted to actually have a, a moment just to really, really uh, reflect on how important this knowledge uh, this wisdom really is like we we're, we're talking about the wisdom of the soul to conquer feelings of loss fear death the biggest questions and the biggest challenges in life to lose someone that 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 you love and someone that you care about you know to to have you know things going around you that become so numbing that you even forget that you know how far we've all come together the importance of of who we truly are and the essence of what it really took to get us to this point like we are nothing made into something like nobody knows where it started and yet here we are you can't even fathom what the beginning would be like what would start it and we're over here talking to each other with all these different devices and computers and fingers and animals and insects. And so when you see what's happening in the reality right now, you got to know that what we truly are is so much more greater than that. And what's really happening is so much bigger than that. It's almost like we're in this little bubble, literally, and being terrorized in this bubble <laughs> and now needing to burst that bubble and actually become who we truly are because this is also a phase like it's not what I feel like uh, since I've gone through it, a necessary phase for the type of growth that I'm into. I can see why I would come into something like this that's just so serious to make me really understand who I am. And this would be like the elite training. So I wanted to take that, that auspicious moment to touch and agree here. And what that is for those that are just tuning in is us coming in tune with the truth, which is not only are we unified, it's not a choice for us, but that also we are standing in this conscious unity that's actually saying we know that we are everlasting. We know that we are all connected. We know that we stand in center with all the rest of the stars and we light this space up. And that if there was ever anything that we all needed even wanted anything that we desired that we could have it if for one moment we could recollect on a perpetual energy a maximum spectrum everything connected and that's what you're looking at right now for those that are here on the zoom side of things you can hit your gallery button and you can see all the beautiful faces in all the beautiful spaces all across the cosmos first lighting up from within. You can see that there is not a color line. There is not a waistline. <laughs> there is no lines at all dividing us. And that in itself, that's everything. When we learn to appreciate that, we, when we learn to take a moment for that, then we'll know that at, at that point we have everything. So in these spaces that we've opened up, and there are many more of these, if you're ever feeling in the past or in the future downtrodden, that you're not getting the things that you need and the things that you prefer, remember these moments. Anchor into these moments. Know that space and time doesn't exist. And full spectrum everything is here right now wholeness big challenges big challenges this evening conquering death fear and loss even with words meaning that the things that we're coming up against we're now having to attempt to explain it in words so that others can can defeat it so others can come to some level of a, a greater awareness and i'm going to take apart and i'm going to put together words 
and letters this evening. And I trust that by the end of this projection that you will be able to see exactly why the words and the letters become so, so powerful in this time that we're in to program and to change the things that are going on around us, especially in our minds. The words that you tell yourself and the things that you say to yourself when you're running over the history of the universe, you ever done that in your mind? Be like, okay, so where did we come from again? <laughs> when you're doing that, that you learn to actually use the right type of vernacular and that you be kind to yourself as you're walking self, or if you're also walking yourself out of kind of like a cunningly contrived trap language. And the reason is because language in itself is the is the subset of what you could call the ego. And, you know, without getting into ego conversations today, because if some folk with ego be like, what's wrong with ego? You know, they'd be, <laughs> be like, okay, <laughs> not an ego, but ego uses language. Ego, that's why, you know, when, you, when you're gonna, when you, as, a, as a professional basketball player, you're not telling yourself, okay, we're gonna shoot this at a 45 degree arc, you're gonna curve your wrist, and then it's gonna drop in the bucket every single time they're going to take a shot, right? So they don't have this interruption or in the Zen, you don't have this linguistic interruption that is actually making you at minimum a half second behind what's really going on. So when one is in ego, it's almost like instead of being a zero, they're the one. <laughs> they just kind of skip the previous step and they're like a lag, they're lagged in behind. That's even for an egotistical culture. It just lags behind. Ego always wants to dominate something because it knows subconsciously itself that it is not the original. So it has to find something to control. This is what the fascination with technology has been now because we, we tell it what to do, it does what we want it to do. And then it saves us even some time as far as that something that equation that would take us hours, months to do, machine can do, in a few seconds, giving us back that time, even as giving us excess time, even putting us basically in the future, fast forwarding us. And the interesting thing about all of this is, is that if you notice like some people like the simple life, most of the time when they even come to Costa Rica, you know, you start seeing paradise and you realize paradise is pretty simple. <laughs> it moves at a certain pace and certain vibration. That's why you feel like you're on vacation because when the technology and all that stuff hits, it's all a vibration in itself. It's a wave in itself and it moves faster. <laughs> That's what I say, oh, the speed of technology. And as it's moving faster, because we're in a vibratory field, of course, we start to move faster. But remember, like plants, if you try to increase the vibration of the soil of a plant higher than the nutrients and higher than the things that keep it together, the plant's gonna die. So this rapid vibration, <laughs> of so many different things that even our grandparents, our grandparents didn't catch up. Our parents are not catching up. We're sometimes not catching up. Our children are not catching up. They flipping technology so fast. It's like, okay, now you're gonna do this. You're gonna do the, okay, you're on the computer at the grandma folks like, I don't like computers. All right, you're phased out. Whatever happened to grandma, we don't know. Here goes a new thing. All right, TikTok, yeah, you're on TikTok, dance. You're on da dance. And then the, 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 the folks like, you know, the, the adults are like, man, I don't know. You know, I don't know, I ain't finna do all that. Then you get out of here then, you know, the kids over there trying to do it. Now they got, okay, put this on your face. <laughs> all right, now you're gonna, you see what I mean? So it's moving so fast. The frequency is moving fast. And fast frequencies, the beauty of earth is, earth moves at a frequency that actually, which you would say is uh, uh, slow. Like I say, 7.83 to 12 hertz, you can measure it. Some people we want to take earth to like 5,000 hertz, <laughs> never realizing that you would just rip apart the entire space. All of those little single cell organism and mycelium networks would just all be ruptured because you wanted to turn on basically mega death. <laughs> you know, that's what it would sound like. So we have this opportunity to actually see and teach ourselves through a level of master knowledge that has already been available on the planet and is the planet and is us. And we, when we adhere to that system, we don't have to really ask ourselves, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing. I wonder if I'm doing the wrong thing. 
There's no dialogue that goes on between you and who you truly are. There's no more conversation going on with you and yourself and your mind. You become. You cease to be ego, who's a few steps behind with a time machine. <laughs> and you actually become the original, which is always just monitoring everything that is going on and in love, allowing it to continue. Some people think, you know, like when earlier in life, and people, say, people used to tell me, man, everything, you know, or when you tune into the spiritual set, it's all is love. I'm like, oh, man, here we go with the laws of love of people. <laughs> I didn't get it. All is love. And I'd be like, hey, there's all sorts of stuff going on. They just wasn't explaining it. They need to add more. So I'm here to add more for you today. It all began with love. There is no other force that bring things together that are so betwixt. What do I mean by that? You can have two opposite poles and they can get hit with this thing called love. <laughs> and then next thing you know, they be hanging out with each other with love in between them, connecting them. So, you know, your mother and your father, you know, they're opposite poles. Metaphysically. What brought them together was an urge. And I want to tell you here today that the definition of the spirit. Spirit is created by a deep yearning, right? So if you have this Taurus field around you and it's around everything and it's deep yearning for the future, which is even you, that's why I say you are the future, creates the spirit. So this is just telling you that Every, everything else comes forth from love. So love is the original, but then, you know, as, you know, time starts interacting, basically all the planets enter. Now, I want to explain that just for what it really is, because, you know, some say, are there really planets? There are conjunction points. But specifically, what we're talking about is, is that it turns out mathematically and through geometry, which that that's where some of the secret society knowledge really is, right? It's in these numbers and these mathematical quotients. But there's some basic principles to actually understand. Like, for instance, a Taurus can only be divided perfectly seven times. It's about the numbers in the geometry. So you can slice a donut basically into seven equal parts. And that's why this whole number seven, seven days of the week and this kind of stuff. That's why that's all in play. So it's not really just these planets, Thor, Jupiter, all this kind of stuff. What it really is is seven unique segments of an instrument. And when we learn how to play this instrument, when we learn how to actually even realize that it's there, then we're able to control and tap into the, the, the harmonics that are actually around us so we can control the waves. Now, I'm going to deliver this right now, and then I'm going to explain it in just a moment. <laughs> but it's that, we, see, we visualize, we begin to visualize that those who have esoteric and occult power are constantly conjuring something, right? Like that's, that's the whole new rookie off track magicians because that's not what the ancients were doing they weren't like trying to always conjure up i'm gonna bring up love and whatever what they were doing is they realized certain principles about how the reality functions especially with waves and they peeped out that waves were always coming there were always there was always something coming it's just like if you're standing on the shore on the beach waves are already always coming so their level of mastery was is to counteract every wave with an equal vibration, i.e. an angel and a demon. And what that would do was that would cancel the wave. And it would allow them to remain in a space where there is no time. You call it zero point. You call it uh, anti-gravity. Weightlessness. You would always be in this space where nothing is interacting upon you because you're sending a wave against a wave that just balances it out, right? So the birth of this other magic where, you know, you start, you know, finding spells and creating things and all that kind of stuff, all that was, you know, that was just going to put you in time. You were going to keep yin yanging. Maybe you, you could do, maybe you was doing it stronger than everybody else, but that just meant you, you fell even harder than everybody else. Real mastery was about achieving a certain perpetual state of timelessness. And there's only one way to do that. <laughs> That's why 
no matter where you go in the universe, I don't care where you end up, they will still be practicing any masters this same system we're going to be talking about tonight. There is no other system. That's why it says one word controls them all. We already told everybody what the word was. There's another prelude to this recording even tonight. It's called Origins Tetragrammaton, if you want to check it out. And I'm showing how this hidden word supposedly that's supposed to be God is actually a cognate of the Taurus field that is moving around us. And the reason why they're calling it the hidden word is because as long as you are going to look for it, you'll never find it because you are it. So you're constantly wandering into this wilderness of nod, which means sleep, and looking for something that is actually you, which becomes so difficult to find as long as you keep looking outside of yourself. So I do want to zoom in just very briefly before I take off here that because there's no substitute for time, and it does take time and energy every time I come into this space. I don't just flip on the camera and just kind of come with anything. I could do that. Maybe rack up a bunch of likes and views. Let me see. Let me look at this thing tonight. Wow, the ratio of likes is really nice. Thank you. You might want to hit the like button. You know, it just sounds so weird for me to just go in every video. Everybody hit the like and the subscribe button if you, <laughs> you see what I mean? Even R was listening to that today. She was like, don't every, doesn't everybody know where the like and subscribe button is? I was like, yeah. She said, so why did everybody on videos be asking them to do the like and the subscribe? I said, because they're reminding them, Ara. And then, and, and then she said, Are they, it sounds like they're just reminding themselves. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to go through this with you. It just doesn't make any sense for her. You know, it's like clear thinking and common sense. But you know, I really wanted to, to let everybody know, again, because there's no substitute for time, when I come into the space, I'm coming with something. If I don't have anything to say, I'm not there. Like, because I'm waiting on that next transmission to, and I'm, or, and I'm working on what I previously was transmitted as long with what I gave to everybody else. So it's in real time. Also, there is a part to this called sovereignty mentorship where we go in deep. All this stuff on the public channels and things like I just, you know, I try to let, you know, there's a lot of other crazy stuff going on. So when I come through, I drop the gems and then I'm out versus if I go every day, they may look like, okay, what's up with this guy? He seems to know a little bit more uh, than meets the eye. So, you know, I just want to make sure I keep some balance. And then also <laughs> I had to refocus a lot of my time and a lot of my energy towards the things that I feel like are very important these times because I these are what do they call it? The term you hear all the time, unprecedented, unprecedented times. Like they are doing things that our great grandparents, grandparents, parents, and us didn't really think we'd ever see in our lifetime. They just, you know, breaking all just rules or supposed rules. And, you know, it's turning things upside down. So as I said, we all lived through the last two years and maybe uh, uh, like me, your plans have kind of changed a little bit based on some of the stuff that you've seen uh, in the last two years as far as your five year plan, right? <laughs> so what I decided to do is keep going forward with becoming our own bank. That is for Secret Energy to become a DAO and a protocol, uh, obviously launching a cryptocurrency in the space with some real stuff because our tech is really already built. And so we don't have to go and make a bunch of promises and take up a bunch of money uh, from folks. You know, we can really, really come into the space and do like we're doing here, which is really keeping it on point and just sharing the love and spreading it because there's more than enough, right? We have the TV station coming, which is gonna be awesome. Uh, it's been something I've been really working on for almost two years now. I've always wanted to have a TV station. I was able to settle on a hybrid and actually really get in a really nice schedule of, of different shows to come through to not only teach us, to motivate us, uh, to keep us in shape, to, to keep us healthy, and all of those things so that if, in, if you're coasting through during the day, you, you can turn that on and there will be something there for you. And um, also, as you know, we, we have been in the space as far as the blockchain uh, for a minute, seeing exactly what's going on in there and understanding those technologies. We've recognized NFTs a little bit deeper than, you know, uh, where sometimes on the common level, people have seen them as just JPEGs. Uh, we, we've, we realize there's a connection within rarity, you know, and really the essence of our own uniqueness and the value of that uniqueness and how to highlight that value and how to keep that value protected. So underneath NFT and what you're seeing, like people do with NFT, understand that there is a framework there for sovereignty 
and especially for creators. We have been seeing that again, that technical curve is coming fast. While we're we're in the know, all of the children that are coming forth right now, they're not even in the position to get ready to start that in the know process in many cases. So we have to shield them in certain ways why they're going through their own things and you know exploring their own selves so we've already deployed actually a play to earn metaverse uh with the youth especially inner city children and you know we're we're de we deployed that but we're about to roll that into also what we're doing when we enter into that space of, of, of decentralization and dial networks so if i and if I intend to do any of that, which by all means I do, in fact, I'm actually launching here in March 22nd, that's my, uh, that's my target. Then I would have to, to get, get busy. I would have to, to get on point and I would have to rally also others that are around me that have that skill and have that ability and have that synchronicity to join in on this venture. And so that's actually what I've been doing. And I'm pretty much complete with the first phase. And uh, and now we're going to be coming forward to everyone and letting you know what you can do and how you can participate and, you know, how we can keep spreading this awareness. The next thing is, is that. Um, as you know, I, I've always been extremely inspired in, in the spiritual spiritual technology, as I've as I've called it. Uh, we are spirit tech, and that's just saying that there is a tech, as you see in Aztec, there is a form of technology that is actually far more advanced than what we're using right now in these cell phones, uh, that there is knowledge there, like such as an antennas, metamaterials, broadbands, frequencies, herds, vibrations, you know, there's a real, there's a real powerful knowledge within what these things are constructed with. Uh, however, the current manufacturers are definitely not going to put anything together that is going to either be regenerative or be able to project fields because that's really what's necessary now. Like right now, we got all these fields coming in. Like at this point with psychomancy and radionics, they pretty much can control the dream remotely because you're soaked in uh, uh, 3G, 4G, 5G and everybody else's G field. Uh, most of the time when you're going to sleep, people got the router laying right next to them, the phone right there. So what kind of technologies are being built to push those fields out or to, in, in many ways, just cancel out those fields. So that way you have a, a bubble, if you may, uh, that is free of those kind of frequencies. So Spirit Tech is, is graduating in that space. And we plan on rolling out some IR, IRL NFT relics is what I'm calling them, where basically they are the objects themselves that project these fields because and also uh, uh, become houses to high vibrational spectrums. We'll put it like that. Things that don't want to be in human bodies because there's, you know, there's trouble in the land, but will resonate and vibrate a certain balance of frequency that can remain as a constant because that's what our temples were. Uh, that's why they're torn down. They were structures that maintained a constant geometrically to hold the space. And when the temple is not uh, uh, refined, just as your physical temple, when it's not um, restored, uh, then the vibration becomes warped and it becomes useless. So there's actually a way for, for that to be reconstructed. And that's what Spirit Tech is about. So that should just give you some some you know, some answers to that question about where Seven Bomar is, and obviously correspondence will be coming to you accordingly of, again, how you can get involved. So now I'm just going to go right in because I'm ready for it. I know some of y'all sitting there like, okay, well, <laughs> I mean, come on, I mean, I'm a pope known, I'm about to go out. What is this, Friday? You know, I'm, shh, I could be at the 12, you know, the 12 ain't even around anymore, but you know, I could be somewhere, you know, so here it is. So look, notice how there's this thing that, you know, we're trying to become gods, right? And, and we're using this, this word too, like, we, we, I want to be a god. We gods. So there's like two levels, right? Because there's the one level of people that they don't even believe that they're gods. I'm not sure if they're actually in a better position sometime than the people who actually think that they are God, but they're using this word God. So this is like a simple check and balance system. This is like, what happens is, is that when you enter in, how can I explain this? It's almost like when you enter in on a substance, for instance, like uh, DMT or ayahuasca, as you're going through the experience, it could get so wild. 
the mind will be like, what's going on? And there will be a small answer back, like you took the, the, the DMT or you, you, you drunk the ayahuasca. And that's why this is going on. So it's almost like a, a foundation for the mind to, to understand what's going on, right? And so <laughs> I guess what, I, what I'm getting, here, getting at here is, is that there's like a check and balance system that goes on inside the consciousness. And, and once it's already kind of like cleared one belief, it can go to the next system. So it has an order to it. And so with this whole thing with the language is, if we don't really clear what it is that we're actually talking about and put it in its proper place, the subconscious accepts it as whatever we think it is. And then it just kind of goes into play. And this happens with language. So specifically with English, when you are saying God, G-O-D, you're talking about a specific being. So if you don't already know how to kind of bypass that part in your mind that wants to associate God with what you think God is, God is almighty, God is blah, 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 and not what God really is, which is good. <laughs> This already crosses a barrier inside of your consciousness and everything just packs up, unpacks from there. So what an illusion is, is that you don't see the first Trojan horse. You don't see the first thing. And if you don't see that first thing, everything else that comes after that, you accept. But if you know what that first thing is, you can override everything that comes after that. So if you can be using the word casually, yeah, I'm a God, but you actually know you're referring to I'm a Supreme and not good, then, you know, you're, then you're able to even maybe use the word. But if not, you fall into a default category that when you say that you're a God, you are actually still sending out the signal and that vibration or that electricity if you may, because that's what words are. You're sending out that electricity of that specific entity. So when we're saying that we want to become God, before I even define God, what I still will just tell us from our natural knowledge when we sit back, God is seems to be pretty busy, if you didn't notice. Like, let's say there is a God, okay? God has certain qualifications. He's supposed to be one, all-knowing. Have you ever tried to know everything? Do you know how much you would be thinking about if you knew everything? Some people try to give like God, like this ability to somehow know everything, but still be cool. <laughs> but because we think God would then be somebody different than us when we're looking up to God, <laughs> we come to those kind of conclusions because the truth is, is that if God was just us, we could then take it as a re regular example. Like what happens when we try to know everything? How much confusion ensues? Now, what is knowing everything, right? Because at the end of the day, you may have narrowed it down to knowing certain things in books, but knowing everything means knowing everything. Now, you got to know the calculations, the stars, the whole nine, right? But what is most important is to realize that a being that would know everything would still have to manage being able to actually have their mind filled all the time with busyness. Right. Because for what we've learned now is, is that truly one of the grandest states that you can actually get to and be in is when your mind is clear and everything is kind of silent and you're entering into these spaces of energetics through your breathing and all of this. And the mind has basically become like uh, uh, neutralized. So uh, so an all knowing state would kind of be opposite to that. That's that's what I'm getting at here. Some, something that's trying to know everything would almost be opposite to the Zen. And this is what we have to realize that this is a world of contrast. So just as you can see the Zen, like, man, I'm just I'm Zen, you know, like there's I got this whole field of vibration. There's nothing I'm not worried about death and anything like that. So that's the Zen space that there's got to be something opposite. And what I'm telling you is God, by the word, is actually opposite to Zen. So technically, they have people wandering after this idea that they even would want to become a being that knows everything, which will be constantly disturbed with their thoughts. So what I want to bring out here is, is that, so who is 
God. Now, let me uh, let me go to the board here because I know y'all ain't seen it in a while. Let me go ahead and zoom in on it. I know there was like a round of applause for that. Like, OK, great. We, we're, we're here now. <laughs> let me just go to this board real quick and let me write this out. Let me zoom in. Let me see here. We got a little zoom in going on just so you can see what I'm right here. Give me one moment. Let me enlarge this. Okay. Okay, so watch how this works. Okay, I trust that everybody's able to, to still hear me on that side of things. Let me see if my hair's cut off. Okay. Okay, so so God. Okay, so this word God, G O D, okay, comes out as um the Germanic good, okay? Who's also the Germanic guden. Uh who's also the Germanic Wooten, also known as Wood, okay? And for those that know their Germanic, they know that God is also God. God is also God, right? So this is the Gothic God, okay? And the Gothic God, uh, uh, God, is also as you keep going further and further, Wooden is Odin, right? And Odin is, so it's, it's Wood. As I said, Wood, it's War. Uh, it's Wed, as in Wednesday, right? It's um, Grim. Okay, that, that's like in conclusion, <laughs> that's, you know, more oftenly referred at to as grim. Let me see if that showed up for everybody. Okay, good. So my head's on the screen. Okay, so this is important because English, as we know, okay, English uh, actually is, this ang uh, is, is uh, where we get the root angel from. It, it basically means like uh, in itself a god, right? Or as we can see, a, a angel. It's like a one level below God, right? And then ish means uh, man, okay? So English means, as we know, angel man, because it's an act of attempting to, to utilize certain angles from stars and to put them inside of the actual vessels that are speaking the language in itself, okay? And the highlight here is, is that Odin or Wooten though has a very specific story and that story really centers around what's called the wild hunt. And in the wild hunt, you'll find me something to wipe things off with in a minute, but in the wild hunt, let me get back to my my desk home. Okay, there we go. So in the wild hunt, like specifically, like you can go and check this out yourself. Now, some people will, will go back and forth about this because they may want to use the words for something else. They may want to say, well, this, the word means this to me, but the word is actually a vibration. And the vibration calls forth uh, from the angle of the Taurus field, the specific energy in which you're evoking. So it is very specific that when you're saying God, you're talking about Wooden 
or Odin. And Odin's story is basically in a nutshell, if you if you want to see if you want to kind of hang out with Odin, is o Odin is the leader of the Wild Hunt. And what the Wild Hunt is, is supposedly a, a army, if you may, of ghouls, right, that chase large troves of dead people who have been killed in a war to eat them. Okay, that is the wild hunt. So I'm not making this up. So again, so sometimes when we're even saying or thinking that we want to be something or be like something, we have to take a step back for a moment and understand what that something even is. And then maybe isolate that and see if that could be causing some level of confusion because we have an entire, a, a big part of the world aligned to this angelic or Anglo-Saxon God structure in which was birth from mostly their conflicts, which they are seeming to steep themselves into even right now. And that the idea of their of the energy that they were attempting to pull from the stars was to actually be able to slay and all of these other things that are not even really the original ideals. And that's kind of what we're getting to here. We're not really getting to well, who's right and who is wrong. What we're saying is the original is love. So the opposite of that is basically the shadow or the shade or the reflection. It will always be in itself the illusion in itself, the ego itself, ego prime, somebody said demiurge, right? But I also find something very interesting because it's almost like in certain cultures, certain cultures are attempt to try to take other cultures. So we started even relating all of the gods, if you may, from different cultures in with the, the Germanic gods. It was like they kind of consumed or Gothic gods, they kind of consumed all of the other gods and theisms in the world as if everybody worshiped the same type of God under the same thing. And that's not true. Doesn't that sound stupid anyway? Like I could, you could go to my tribe somewhere else in the other part of the world in Mediterranean, you know, we're peaceful. We, we ain't been to war. Everybody's on, on, on love, advancement, technology, the whole nine. And then all of a sudden, 3000 years in the future, somebody is saying that the same God that we worship was the same God that everybody else was worshiping. Right. That 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 just seems so far fetched, but it can be accepted unless you understand what God is in the first place, what ancestors are in the first place and how in which do they come into the world and how in which are they evoked into the world and what they are really. And also, when you're able to do that, you're also able to identify yourself. You're able to understand how you come into a matrix, how you exit a matrix all those kind of things. So it's all rolled into the same system. So let me do this. I'm going to find something to erase the board because I do need to, to get back in on it. I'm also going to get a little water here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the next stage of after God, because it, it's kind of clear still though, that when you come in with this design, you already been speaking the language. You've already gone through this experience. It actually either means that you're either you're probably either devolving de and need to re-evolve, but it definitely means that you need to take the next step forward. So what we're actually talking about really today is actually the level beyond God to evolve from a God. I think that at some point in the near history that humanity had gotten themselves into aligning with this types, these type of energies. But the graduation from that, because I would have trust that everybody had enough of, of their warfare because all the names of this God is actually centered around the same thing everybody is crying about right now. People act like they will even when, you know, sometimes you see people flirt with it. It's interesting to watch how people like, yeah, I hope that, you know, they bring out those AC-42s like and, and, and bomb up this. And you're just watching, you're listening to the you're looking at the kind of thing and it just kind of lets you be aware of what kind of matrix you're actually in. It's like you actually really wishing like death on somebody that you would not even be able to bear yourself. You know what I mean? Like how disconnected is that from just the whole thing? It's a disconnect. I'm going to show you how today that, you know, there becomes a disconnect between us and this ancient knowledge and this ancient wisdom about ourselves. And when that disconnect happens, it kind of like allows us to be manipulated by these kind of vibrational frequencies and waves that don't really have our best interest in mind. So let me get my, my cloth here real quick 
and uh, and we're going to come forward with the board in just a moment. I also have some imagery here. I'm going to put something up right now. And what I want you to zoom into on this, because, yeah, sometimes I'll be speeding through the images, so I'll just put it up here. So what you're looking at here is you're looking at the, the what you would call uh, monograms of two languages. And, and these two languages are Hebrew and English. And what I'm getting you just to pay attention to very briefly here is the simple fact that what a monogram is, is that when you pack up the entire language, it, it will bear one symbol. Right. So the so the one in the bottom in the middle or somewhat in the middle is English's monogram. That means every letter and number of the English language can be can be mapped out onto that symbol. We also have disclosed that Hebrew, as some others knew too, that Hebrew is only this same double triangle, if you may, Megan Star, whatever you want to call it, this same double tri triangle, but just the vectors of this same double triangle mapped out in different ways, and that was the language. We know also that this is actually a superficial uh, way of, 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 a, of, of indicating a Taurus field or a Shri, right, like a Shri Yantra which is also a two-dimensional Taurus field. So in respect, the language as we know it, from English all the way to Hebrew and many other languages, you can probably say all the languages, are a series, a series of triangles or darts even, right? Because that's what a tip of a dart looks like. And these darts fulfill the word itself because the word is in English or English letter a letter and the only word that we really even use right now that actually uh, has that letter in it is a uh, blood letter or it gives us some type of definition of what the word letter means. There's, there's a term called a blood letter and a blood letter back in the day used to use uh, um, cupping, um, leeches, et cetera, to pull blood from a person. So it just lets you know that that means that the word letter means to basically extract. So words extract what? And we know all, it's all is energy. So words extract energy. When we say something, it's the actual vibration that is being extracted from our energetic force. So letters being a coding system, it allows us to be able to program the reality with utilizing these darts or what they're called swords. This is why swords is an anagram for words. So you would be using these swords basically to cut into the reality what it is that you want. Unfortunately, with English, though, English is so degraded because you can go back only, I guess it's what, 150 years. And the English that they're writing is totally different than the English that you're writing right now. Like the F is the S and all sorts of letters are also moved around. You can also go into other languages that are basically the parents of English and actually find that many of the letters have been substituted. Almost as if, and we showed this chart before, uh, that most of the letters are basically the other letters. So like there's like only a few letters to begin with, but there's all these other letters that people perceive as being different letters and so this just creates a world of confusion. This becomes when, you know, probably this, you know, Gothic king is saying to its angelic squad, let us go down and confuse them. And this let us go down and confuse is basically to move around the language and to actually remove the meaning of language. Now, I'm going to tell you why that happens, because I didn't really know the order in which I was going to introduce some of the things that I had to build on this evening. Why, why that happens, why that is in the agenda of the distorted ones. Because, see, before we had language, okay, we were really, and I don't, I don't even say we, I don't know what, what, that, what the leap is for that kind of being. We're all connected, but even to say we, you would have a, probably a difficult time relating. And in this case, I'm talking about to the orangutan and the chimpanzee and the monkey. OK, who does not have the language system that we have, but they have something very important to make them something that we need to observe to connect the links or dots on something. And that's they have this hand. 
And we talked about that this hand, as far as phi is concerned, and the geometry within this hand creates much of the power in this realm. That's why it's so symbolic to actually being every day. You know, we use in the hand, everything we build is with the hand. This is what five, five fingers. This is the pentagram. This is at PHI or five. So this hand right here is indeed very, very magical, very important. And the monkey has one. And the monkey plays around and uses the hand, orangutan using the hand to create rudimentary tools and to get termites and things out of holes. Right. But somehow here we are, we're already trying to take stuff off in space. We got rockets, you know, we got computers and all that. So where, what is the missing link between a monkey and human 3.0 or whatever version we're on right now? What I'm, what I'm going to prove inconclusively, but you should know is it's the language. And the language is not just something we learned. That's why they want to make it like, well, we were going, ooh, ooh. And then we were like, ooh, and then all of a sudden complex was like, yo, what's good, girl? Like, it was just, just, we just went from that to that, and that, that's not how it happened. The language was actually put in our mind. You see what I mean? Because language in itself is from the Taurus. So the original language is a Taurus. It's a vibration. It's a tone. It's a frequency. And so when we were given that, or we were birthed in or initiated into that, that's when we knew. The Taurus is the apple in the garden. They say when they bit it, then he knew he was like a God. It's like once you're aware that you have a Taurus, once you're aware of the Taurus, it gives you a certain level of reasoning and cognizance that separates you light years from where the orangutan is. But see, they want to put you back in that box. They want you to be a monkey again. They want to tell you you're a monkey. And what I mean by that is that you got to observe monkeys. There's no beef against monkeys, but monkeys be fighting all the time. Like their monkeys run by the house all the time. I'm in Costa Rica. They, man, they keep up a lot of noise. Other, just today, you hear the screaming. Ah! Ah! And I'm like, oh shit, what the hell's going on? Oh, the monkeys. <laughs> Go watch a documentary. They ain't just acting. The monkeys have a hierarchical system. Monkeys, just good monkeys that are in the hierarchy stay over here. The other monkeys sleep out in the cold. The other monkey sitting in the jacuzzi and he's the king monkey. He gets all the monkey girls and then the rest of the other monkeys, they just can sit on the outskirts and beef and fight with each other. Right. So it's just like they fighting over food. You got to. So this is what they want. And this is why the language has been confused because it's degrading the because people don't have the original language it's degrading them back to the same mire that they crawled out of. That's why they got the racial problems and the racial issues and they trying to figure out you know, if you look at the world right now, look, let me get my board. Hold on real quick. Hold on. I'm going, I'm going in on them. Hold on. Let me, let me just show you. Cause you know, I'm not going to get out of this without addressing the elephant in the room. Give me one moment. All right, here we go. You know, cause we, you know, Dealing with these folks, we be back at the planet of the apes and everybody will be accepting it, too. It's like, oh, well, you know, this and this and this and it's OK. And I don't know. I don't believe, you know, everybody's so smart now. They oh, well, we're going to listen to correspondence and, and, and this person who knows all this and they're going to tell us all this. And meanwhile, these people don't know anything about the language that they're even speaking in. So how do they even know what it is that they're actually saying? And they're so convinced you know, running around in, there, in, in this little illusion. So look at it right here. Even, a, so I said, in everything, because the words control everything, the words have to be in play. And if you know what the word means, then you know what's actually going on. Let me see here. Okay, there I am. So look, who noticed this? Did anybody notice this? Who noticed this? That when I was watching Buddy uh, like four, six, four or five years ago when he was running with Obama, I, I said even personally in a mental note of myself when I was doing the etymology on Obama, right? The Barack, the, the savior, right? The, the Kool-Aid. Everybody was asking me about Obama and I was like, 
honestly, it's really the vice president guy. If that guy ever becomes president, we need to watch out because that name right there, <laughs> that's actually what I said. I got it on recording. To look up now, here we are, what, six, seven, eight years later, and we're at this point. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that, for instance, like when Trump came through, the reason why we didn't have any wars, because I've lived through, I don't know how many wars now at being 43 years old. Like I haven't, I'm glad we haven't gone live. You know, we've been the most powerful army in the world, right? So if you gonna go, you that means you signed up and didn't have to go forcibly. But I've literally lived through at least 10 to 12 wars since I've got here on the planet. And the only time that I can remember that there wasn't a war was about a few years ago because that person was already committed to starting a civil war, meaning that when Trump was in office, it was a civil war that was being waged and the people were basically put into this 50 50. This is what they want, because you need a 50 50 to get a civil war. But in the, as I said, in the previous times, though, you always had like, you know, there was almost like a 70 30 going on where 70 percent of the people were in agreement with the legislation and the powers that be. But when it's and they, they kept it like that, they know how to manipulate these polls, right? However, when they start pushing it towards a 50 50, now you know it's about to be civil war. And that's kind of how it was. They had half of the folks on Trump's side and half of the folks on the Democrat side, right? And by the time the campaign was over, that's where America was, if you may. They were split. So that was the agenda to do that to the Uniteds, right? Because that also happened in the United Kingdom in a few different ways. But now it's being done to the world because now they're trying to make people determine who is really the side that you're going to jump on. And when you notice, you go into any kind of news thread, comment thread, and you see what's going on. Oh, my goodness. Anybody who has just been stumped on by the United States is on Russia's side. Anybody who is, 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 is you see what I mean? So it's just like there's every single, if you're a neo not if you're a Nazi, then you're with Ukraine because, you see what I mean? So it's just like every single little, small, little pigeonhole, nook and cranny, crazy uh, uh, category that they have created, they still have now boiled that down to a 50-50. Either you're on this or this. But what do these words really mean? Is anybody familiar with the stock market or gambling or any of that? <laughs> What do these two words mean in that realm? Because they have a real definition. What does it mean to place a bid and what does it mean to place a put? A bid is when you, you, you're, ready, you're going in. You may even be doubling down. This means that you're looking at the situation and you're ready to take whatever it is at the cost of what it is. Versus a put is, is you, you, you anticipate that it is going down you put a, a, a price at what is going to go down, and when it goes down, you actually make money because you were able to make that call. So when you think about this from an energetic level, in a nutshell, what you can really say is that it's that gambling of everybody's energy to where both sides are losers, but once again, it's red team or blue team. Right? And then the matrix rolls out its next level of shenanigans as if the one we can't speak of, that, that thing that starts with C, is just gone already. And then the new wave of ty tyrant, tyrant, tyrannical, uh, 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 the new tyrannical wave is here. Now watch this. And this is all, again, a product of the God that people worship. Watch. Because the worshiping is happening inside of the mind the worshiping is happening inside of the language and it's being so haphazardly done that it's like the repercussions. The repercussions are not allowing many to get their ground on and to actually fully experience what you came here on the realm to do. It's actually even mind controlling most people to feel like that they got to choose between these two maniacs. Right. So give me one second here. I have a I have a definition coming for Wooden or God. <laughs> now remember how this all happened because the religions that are in the English tradition, it was like they just passed those traditions right over in the language. So despite the Christianity and all that, because these Anglo-Saxon kings, 
uh, mainly the ones that are what they call upper gentry, the highborns, when they accepted Christianity, they accepted Christianity as a way to unify their colonies, but they never changed their um, they, they never changed their beliefs. They never changed their 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 heritage and their lineage. So what happened was everybody just inherited their lineage and then accepted it. And so if you became a serf, which is basically anybody who was absorbed into their kingdom, if you became a Slav uh, or, or, or a Slovenian or, or, or a slave in their fiefdom, then you worship their king, Gud, uh, as a god, because everybody in that realm that was a ruler had to be able to prove that they were a descendant of these highborn uh, angelic or English bloodlines. Okay, so we're gonna look real quick here. We're not gonna harp on this, but we just want to make sure it's very clear that because so, so cause when people are telling you and they're asking you why is all this happening. Why is God allowing this to go on? <laughs> they need to understand that this is what God does. <laughs> From that word, and maybe you just have a different definition of what we're talking about, but you need to be very clear with your words because when you try to take somebody else's name and that name is already bound within the stars, you're not gonna just change that. Meaning that the Germanic God goods energy or vibration, because this is what they say in the tradition that 3,000, 4,000 years ago, you didn't see any of the gods in this culture specifically depicted as like humans, but more as like energies that exist within things, right? So when we look here, and let me just remove myself uh, from the screen, <laughs> and this is just how backwards things are. Actually, let me pull up one more thing here, because just so, so people can see um, just how all of these sides are actually the same thing, but they have people running around here uh, fighting on one side or another, dying in these wars. And then more than likely, because this is still the traditions that they're serving in, because they always got these priests and they always got these orthodox creepos hanging around. Because of that, here it is, Naza right here. Let me see the highest member let me see here, highest member of the Sanhedrin. Highest member of the Sanhedrin. All right, here we go. Okay, so anyway, this term is Nazi, right? Whether they keep changing it or not, Nazi Sanhedrin. You know, sometimes like for a while, I just had to actually copy and paste some of this stuff just because you would go back and you wouldn't find it. So anyway, a Nazi is, is the highest member of the Sanhedrin. There's a Wikipedia that actually uh, dictates that, okay? Why the Sanhedrin is actually a Jewish establishment. But then you would actually think that, again, that it was the Nazis against the Jews, right? So those are two conflicting things. Same thing here as this Odin. So as I said, now the, the Nas, a Nas would be then in this case, a master of, okay? So the word is a, a Nas is a, a master of. So a lot of the ending of Wooten's name as in Wooten Nas would end as the master of. And because people didn't visualize gods as actual people, but energies that filled everything, as you can see, not uh, uh, Wooten was the leader of the possessed, uh, delirious and raging. Like when somebody is really going crazy, a madness and fury and a frenzy. Okay. A furor. Okay. Frantic, wild, crazy, possessed. Okay. So they're very clear that this word God is referring directly to this kind of energy. And so when that kind of energy is being evoked in the matrix, because there's a whole theology around this, as I said, the wild hunt, the wars, the whole nine, then it's like, okay, so you've taken on this culture. <laughs> you don't want this stuff in your life. 
you don't want to live in this kind of world. You're trying to be with the original. The original is the opposite energy to this. It's not mad. It's not in a frenzy. It's not crazy. It's aware of what's happening around it. It actually knows what's going on. It's in the Zen moment. It actually is projecting what's going on. Something that's wild and crazy. That's another thing why you, you could see then that since we're talking about a certain type of energy and this energy is now really becoming more of an id or id, you can see that part of God's frenzy is actually not knowing everything. It tries to know everything, but it doesn't know everything. This is like a general of war wants to know everything about what's going on in the land because it needs those logistics. It's like the same thing that we're dealing with right now in, in society. It's like the, the, the cell phones are spying on us, the cameras are spying on us, the damn, uh, uh, the AI is crawling all over the text, satellites are all in the sky. Who the hell is so damn afraid? It's because it wants to know everything. And that's why I say when we want to become God, we're basically saying that we want to enter into this delirium. And that's why their, their initiations surround this level of delirium. And they will sacrifice a person into that delirium and then be like, next. It's like, again, because they're disconnected. If you're wondering, well, why are they acting like this? Why are they doing this? Because they're disconnected. They don't know love because they don't know the original language. You see what I mean? So the more beings that come into the world that can't tap in because the original language is within, then they start living without. And then they go into this madness, this delirious rage and frenzy. And then they try to control the world and everything around them with that delirium. And this is why I said that today also you got to realize the power that you actually have because the only thing that balances this out is so you can imagine then that people would immediately get it wrong when let me show you something this is another big part of this people would get it wrong with this idea of a good angel watch this so what i explained to you earlier was i explained how i explained how you basically have let me just wipe this board down real quick. I'm just having an issue here with this, this cloth, but we'll keep going with it. So let's look at this. So we have, let's, let's look at the whole, the whole system in itself. Let's say that this is, we're going to draw this as the Taurus. Okay. These two fields. Now, mind you that these two fields are also the two hemispheres of your brain. Let's just get a nice little drawing here so I can explain this. Okay, so that's good enough as a Taurus field. Okay, so how should I come at this? <laughs> Okay, so let's first identify the field here. Let's map out the field because, you know, if you're, if you're traveling across to terrain, before you make travels, you need to have the map. So we need to understand how is it, like, because you may ask me, like, well, can you identify this field? I'm, I even have to identify how language is now in this field and letters are now in this field, which is actually quite easy. But the first thing is I have to identify the field for you. The field is inside of you and it's all around you. And that's what also makes it omniscient. But you kind of need to understand how the field works and how it generates and how what you're seeing in the sky that you call the stars are actually these points on the field. And somebody was even on it today. They were like, you know, it's the horizontal and the vertical waters. So what the ancients are saying is, is that every cross point of the field, now you can imagine there's, there's a countless amount of cross points because inside of your, um, let's put this into another context. Like when I remember I said that this is your brain, right? So let's imagine that in the cent that, it, that the brain actually has what we call the crown chakra. And what the crown chakra is, is like an interface of trillions, a countless amount of neurological wires, if you may, that are connected and interlinked with your field and all the other fields are subsequently connected and interlinked by this 
these in, this, these what you would would, would think of as uh, tentacles, if you may, right? So you have this crown chakra. You have this crown chakra, and this crown chakra is what is connecting you into the field. So then you would say, so what is the field? So at every single point inside of the energetic field where the vertical and the horizontal energies, which is the, what you would say is masculine and feminine energies respectively, every place that they connect, life is created. And life is a light. So all the lights that you're seeing in the sky, if you weren't getting so much light pollution and your third eye was open, you would see all of the lights connecting. And you would see them connecting into a massive field. And you would be able to identify that every point in that light is actually a point that is connected in the field. And then all of this, as I mentioned, is actually connected into your brain. Okay, so this is the master field. Okay, so this would be you, Taurus head. <laughs> okay, or the bull headed one, right? Or the minotaur in the maze, because this is also known as uh, the tor and the bull, right? Or bowl, right? And Santos is like a master of the whole thing with the terrible Taurus, right? <laughs> like he just, he will identify this and exhaust this for you. Right. If you want to know more about the machinations of this and how it works, Santos Bonacci, but you're also sitting in one. Right. And so my perspective of these kind of things is to take you into different aspects of how this functions and how it functions in conjunction with the matrix. So what you technically have here still is what you would call a masculine, a feminine or a positive and a negative. So you have two shapes here, and this is why they tell you that the ancestors themselves, in an ancient book actually I read, it said the ancestors themselves are more like the shape of your genitalia, okay? So we find geometrically that what that is referring to is one of our ancestors looks like this, and the other one of our ancestors looks like this which is, brings us back to the yoni and the lingam. And this aspect is electric or L, and this aspect is magnetic, right? So when the shaft, which you see, this is also the diagram of our generators, how we're producing power in the reality. When the shaft goes down into the, the, the actual uh, wiring, this is what creates the electromagnetic field and the energy and causes the generation. Now that generation then lights up the entire field and the field becomes interconnected. So anybody who connects into the field all of a sudden has access to every single thing in the field. What gives us access is one, our DNA, because the DNA is the spiral of this exact field. What gives us secondary access to the field, which you would call like a Merkaba or where language then creates a connection, is the linguistic systems that we're using. So let me take a step back for a minute. I'm going to leave that here on the board and then I'm going to go right to my notes since I've been able to explain that a little. And then I'm just going to clear all of this up. Okay, so language. So let's understand that factual, like I've done all of the research, that it's known that the original language came from the stars, okay? Because each of the stars have a vibration, so they're playing a tone. How you would know this is, is that in that symbolism that I just showed you, how this comes out esoterically is, remember I showed you that the L, is the shaft or the rod, right? So there it is up there, the L. So in order for life to begin in this physical world, an L must, or electricity must be fired off. So our language is electric. Even deeper than that, 
the electron again of uh, uh, that that's going into the field is obviously the male's sexual organ which gives off a, a a electron which opens up a field and then from that point the the spirit is capable of imploding and then life is created so So what happens is, is that, so since this field is also the language, and I just kind of need to catch my train of thought here. So, and so the field, okay, so the field in itself is filled of vibrational frequencies, which are sounds. And so when you know certain sounds, you're actually able to open up certain parts of the field, first within yourself and then to the corresponding field. And that's why you have mantras. Mantras are also called yantra, which the word means a machine. And so what this is a reference to is that a series of words can actually be used to plug into this system like a machine and then dial forth commands from the machine. So I'm just bearing witness to in across cultures in all systems, there is an awareness that tones and vibrations can control or actually interact with the field because the field is tones and vibrations. And even deeper than that, that the cross points of the field itself is actually the, the powers within themselves. And so if you could be able to draw down the power of the stars, that's what it's called. If you could draw down the power of the stars by making the actual sounds of those respective areas inside of the field, then you would basically be bringing that energy down to earth. And that's what language does. It brings the power of the stars down to earth through our vocal cavity, which in itself is like a womb. And then we speak with the electricity and then it comes into existence or it comes out void. Meaning that if you don't know what you're saying, then everything that you're saying does not really manifest. It doesn't birth, it's like an abortion. Versus if you have a perfect Taurus, meaning that you have like a, a perfect system of manifestation, then everything that you're saying is manifesting. So I'm trying to give you a picture here of how this would all work and what is it manifesting from by letting you see the connection between the stars and the tones and the vibrations that we're using in words, because then you'll be able to put together that, well, that means then that if a language is only calling certain angles in the stars, then when you put it into your mind, that would become your story. Because your story is a song, your story is a vibration, your story is a frequency. So what languages are is basically a coding program or a story that you are placing inside of your mind that is based on vectors, meaning points that correspond to the stars and the energies of the stars. So you can imagine then that the greatest map that people were looking for for a while was how to determine what energies were coming from different parts of the Taurus field. You see what I mean? Like that would be what's next. It's like, okay, so now we figured out how it works, but how do we know which one is the good one? And how we, how, how we know which one is the bad one. And that brings me to the original reason why I jumped on the board was how the concept of a good angel destroys a magician or anybody else trying to practice mysticism because when you're assuming that there is a good angel that means that you're only trying to maybe call good angels think about how the entire catholic tradition is set up they set out an array of what they call the good angels and then what do most people do they're not going to pray to the bad angels or the demons right they're going to only pray to the good angels but the problem is is that they're completely off with how the field works. What Solomon meant by that you needed to, if you were going to evoke a demon, you needed to evoke an angel, the angel that correspond to it was the same thing I explained earlier by that the whole goal of the real mages was to be able to know what energies counteract other energies. So if a person was sick, they would know the opposing energy to that sickness and then they would cancel out that sickness. That was their use of the field. So it wasn't like, well, let me only call the, the good angels, because if you called anything from one hemisphere or one pole, if you may, from the Taurus field, you would imbalance your whole your whole life and your whole system because you did not evoke the other thing on the opposite of the spectrum, i.e. the angel and the demon to cancel that energy out. And I want to make sure that this is very clear that 
that field, this field that I'm showing you, it really required that a person be able to balance out at all times their field and not leave anything unattended and unmaintained. So this would be like every time you talked, you were birthing something and these were your children and you needed to make good on your word. That's why like your word was the most important thing, like for your great, great grandparents it's like they word is like everything. Never, never go back on your word, son. Right. So your word is, is who you are. Right. And so you're supposed to make your word not come back void. So you're supposed to make your word sound. And now you can then see why that. OK, so let's go in a little bit deeper about. So what is in the Taurus field? How so if we wanted to map it out, it's almost like because the Taurus field is not the not the it's not the uh, the own. It's not the final thing. There is something beyond the Taurus. Right. There's like one one grand thing. But before that grand thing, there is the Taurus where humanity is at right now is several levels below all of that. So it's like to restore the original donut, if you may, inside of the consciousness, the awareness of the Taurus is as simple as looking at certain levels of symbolism. Like, for instance, when an orchestra is about to begin. What is the orchestrator holding in his hand? He's holding a baton. What do you think that baton is symbolic for? It's the electron. It's the Elohim, if you may. It's because of the simple awareness in metaphysics that, as I said, again, if you're standing on the ocean or in front of the ocean at the shore, all the waves are coming to you. But where are the waves coming from? So you can hypothetically answer all these questions for yourself. Wherever they were coming from would have to be the center, right? Because you know that how wave forms work. When you put your finger in water, then the, it sends the wave from there and then it goes all the way out. So that all the way out there is us standing at the shore. So that means that in the center, there's got to be some type of drumstick or pole or tube or shaft that's constantly beating against the drum, if you may, or the, the shri, as I call it, or the triangle, and it's sending out these waves. And this is why I was, I was peeping out some African knowledge the other day, and this, this, this African tribe was like, well, we have the first language because the first language, as we know from all of our ancestors, was from the drum. So I was like, okay, this is interesting because, you know, I, I know it's in the stars, but how does, how does it get in a drum? <laughs> because there's an actual rhythm or a tempo that is coming within the pulse of the planet. And a master that knows this tempo because it constantly changes. Remember, it's a song. It's the orchestrator. So they know how to send that uh, the opposing repulsion. As I said, now, remember, we talked about before that this 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 uh, uh uh mages this magician this 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 being that is enlightened this illuminated one whatever you want to call it this is not a normal phenomenon necessarily in the whole schema of things this is the result of language we talked about that that this uh writing things down has allowed us to carry certain knowledge like when you look at the vimana shastras the bhagavad gita the hieroglyphs the uh, 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 the, um, the coiniform, like we've been recording the progress of humanity and even its spiritual growth across time. So language is bridging time because somebody can read that in the future and start actually conjuring that and creating it and bringing that field back to not necessarily back to life because it's always living, but into the space that they're actually in. That's what language does. So this is an awareness that, okay, well, wow, all right. So the whole, so if you ask the question, well, seven, how could something like the Taurus, which seems so organic, be filled with these things we call letter or words? And you know it's not only through vibration or talking, but it's also because everybody that has a Taurus also speaks a language. And because we're all interconnected, we're like spraying letters all over the Taurus field. And what that also does for a magician is serve as vector points inside of a person's mind. And this is why 
Someone can come up with some words and talking to you and then you can all of a sudden change your mind. You see what I mean? Like you could go to school, somebody can say something to you and then all of a sudden you change your mind. How could that happen and change your vibration, change your frequency? Somebody say something wrong to you, your frequency is going down. How, where, where is that connected? It's connected in the language and because the Taurus is now full of languages because everybody's mind is connected to the Taurus, it serves almost like a direct hack to the original field. OK, something that we're saying that we need so much, we need to communicate, but we still can't seem to understand each other in it. But then there's this higher language that doesn't even involve verbal communication where you can really feel and know everything about a person. So just peep out how how the whole thing is designed inside the matrix. So also we found out that inside of this matrix, there were characters because the matrix in itself was actually geometry. Let me check it out, make sure everything's broadcast and make sure everything's good. Okay. <laughs> geometry, okay, so when you finally unfold the whole geometry mythos, because at the end of the day, not everybody's a mathematician, some people think that, it, oh, that's too complicated. So I'm not like feeling that. That means that their approach towards geometry at times is to try to connect geometry to the same system that uh, maybe what we don't need to learn because it has a tendency to be tough for people to, to kind of relate geometry to spirituality. While then there's a whole new wave right now where all they believe is that geometry, all spirituality is, is geometry. So somewhere in between those two, there is the awareness that the, the actual coding system of the Taurus is phi and pi, the golden rectangle and the golden triangle and the Newman, the nomen and the golden triangle, okay? And when you know about that geometry and how it all comes together, you realize that there were certain shapes that somebody who put it all together came up with to show you that there were literally characters inside the Taurus. These characters, when unfolding the geometry certain ways, even become apparent within their shape. And this is the star, the ace, the sun, the king, the jack, the queen, the deuce, the kite, and the dart. This also makes up our seven planets and Rahu and Ketu, which gives us nine. This is why enneology and the joyous numerology and systems that are actually predicting the character of a person because of what stars they're coming from. And it's because the stars are characters, just like we're seeing in Hollywood right now, but this is the real one. And a person can be casted into one of these characters. This is why we have young stars, we have four stars, we have administrators, we have forecasters, we have cis stars, we have frost stars, we have pranksters, we have test stars, we have mini stars, we have monsters, we have mobsters, we have jest stars, we have magic stars, we have mass stars, and we have disasters. <laughs> Right. So we have all of these stars coming in in this cast to play out these roles that are being dialed in through the language and and actually integrated within the Taurus that is inside of our field. And this could all be going on without us even knowing it. Right. So this is the connection between the stars, you, the Taurus and everything that is going on in your life the rulerships and the dominions, the principalities, the external gods, the angels, the demons. This is where all of this is actually coming from. You got people that now we're in wartime, so they evoke protection. What kind of school did you graduate from? The opposite of war is, is, is love, not protection. Protection is war. So when people evoke, oh God, protect me, they're asking to actually be wiped out. It's just, it's not understanding what are the frequencies that balance out what is going on and what is happening. And it's a frenzy now because now that the language has been impacting people's mind and they don't understand the language, then there's a, a, a issuing forth a confusion. So let's clear up a couple other things. Atlanta is really Atlantis. 
It turns out that there are already maps that show so proficiently that the United States is Atlantis. <laughs> and how they were able to pull over on everyone, the erasing of that awareness is another blow to the whole thing, just as the word black <laughs> means really pale or white and how everybody looks at that as actually opposite right now. So they've turned the entire world upside down. Here's the map. Let's zoom in a little bit here, right around Costa Rica. Costa Rica is at land. Costa Rica's right here, by the way, sitting here. There's the Isthmus of Panama, which is right down there. There's the Atlantic, <laughs> right? And then this is known as Atlantis Insula or the Isles of Atlantis. And, and then how they threw through everyone is that there were a couple of these island chains that for sure sunk. And maybe there was some tourist manipulation going on in those places, which caused total meltdowns of areas when they're actually not utilized properly. That's probably for sure what they're talking about with Atlantis misusing the technology. The only technology is the tourists. But if you make an external one of these like Tesla did, and then you don't have the opportunity to turn it off. Remember that knocker that Tesla created that when he cut it on, it was based on the same frequency that the guy that's doing uh, electricity for the, uh, he's finding electricity in the ground or being able to pull electricity out of this thing he's calling the God frequency. And it's basically this pulse. As we know, there's a pulse to the world, just like you have a pulse on your, your you hold your finger to your, uh, your vein, you have a pulse. The pulse, ha the world has a pulse, it's alive. And if you put something on that pulse and you get it to turbulion, okay, that's the term. Turbulion, look up the technology. It was when the watchmaker discovered that he can create a coil that winds itself up based on the energy of a pulse. And then it, it basically is a perpetual device. Uh, my great friend Hans was also telling me that the heart works the same way, that the veins are actually themselves a spiral. And when the, the heart is not pumping, really, it's using the repulsion or the torbullion force from the veins to actually move the energy and pump through the body, which is counter. Uh, 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 it, it's basically a, a against what is the standard way that people understand how the heart works. So everything that truly works Everything that was really ours and that really was original functioned on the how the Taurus works. And so when you learn the Taurus, you know yourself and it's alive. It's not the word. It's the word that does not come back void, meaning that the moment that you start looking into this whole thing, you'll see it everywhere. For instance, when you're inside of a car. What do you really need to grab to steer where you're going? The wheel. What does the wheel look like? A donut, right? What is it in the center that is able to then connect the donut to the wheels? The shaft. <laughs> no car is made different than this because the car is modeled after the same thing that the human body is modeled after, the same thing that the universe is modeled after. So as I said before, between the Shri, which is the triangle that has the bent edges, right? Which is the lattice work inside of the fields of the Taurus. That's the horizontal and the verticals and how they meet. So that symbol along with the tube, right? Which we're calling the drumstick. <laughs> you can orchestrate anything. And this is why, of course, like, look at the TV. What is it called? The tube, because it is electric. It is Elohim. It is that fertilizing component. So it's putting things into your mind. They literally call it a tube because you're sitting there receptive, right? And then what's coming out of it is sound. That sound is then embedding you or impregnating you with ideas. Those ideas are connected into the stars. And then when you speak them, it gives the opportunity to draw down the power of the star. And when you act in a certain character, it's drawing down the power of the stars. 
And with your awareness of this, then it's possible that you can truly protect yourself. This would be the awareness of pro professional technology. That's what the word means to me, professional technology. What would be the professional technology? The awareness of the Taurus. This is why there is an agenda about what the earth is designed because if they, how the earth is designed, because if they put everybody on the spheric world before you know about the Taurus, world or the original world then you don't you just get circles run around you literally the the spheric world is for someone who has graduated through the Taurus system already and now knows how to enter the fourth dimension which is like an elevator of manifestation that's what spheric projections are used for that's what bubbles are used for because they reverberate the frequency inside of the sphere Versus the toroid is like a teacher. It gives you the yin and the yang, and it lets you see every time you pull one thing, how you need to pull another. When you cut a tree down, if you may, if, if forbidding that you ever did, but we got to build houses, I guess. If you cut a tree down, then you need to plant a tree. If you throw something away, then you need to go pick up a bunch of trash. It's like that awareness that, yo, I'm just trying to stay balanced in this. While other folks, they just want to kick up waves. They want to go and, 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 and send out lots of vibrations that they're just going to get hit back in the face with. It's like, you know, when somebody slam something against a wall and like a rubber ball and it just hits them right back in the face. That's what the language can be like when somebody doesn't understand. It's called the reflux current. You just get hit right back with the same spell you were trying to cast on somebody else because you're utilizing magic improperly. Right. And the true existence here, what would you really what would really eliminate fear for you? What would elim eliminate death for you? What would eliminate loss for you? It's that ability to actually be able to nullify time. To be able to stay in Zen or zero point, to be able to operate in a space that is free of any kind of restrictions and you create that space. Do you know what they call that? <laughs> Hold on. Do you know what they call it in technology right now? They call it noise canceling. <laughs> noise canceling. How does this work? How does noise canceling headphones work? It detects the sounds that are coming that are going around you going on around you, mainly the continuous sounds. And it sends that exact sound back that, that you would be hearing through your ear back out so that it just cancels out the sound. So then you hear almost nothing. So if you can imagine energetically sitting in a noise canceling field, like if your whole frequency and vibration was stable, you wouldn't age. Now, I want to give this insight. I call it level one to level level one to level three type of being, not in any respective order. Level one type of being, selfish, only cares about themselves, nobody else. You watch these people roll through life. Generally, they're loners. You find them in Vegas somewhere. They maybe have one bag of money. They go from place to place. They don't have anything solid, no wife, no nothing, maybe some little fling or whatever, but nothing is stable. These kind of people later on in life, they regret everything. They have no energy to go on. They wish it was all over. Level two. Level two is a person who at least has a family, a clique, a gang, a tribe, or something else to love beside themselves. Some type of driver or passion that allows them to summon more than the energy that just belongs to them, but actually the energy that actually is connected into more or the tribe. Right. And you find these people being able to amass certain levels of strength and resistance. And in progress, because they have something like think about the mafia for the family. Right. So the whole interconnected system in which they created. Right. So they're able to go a little bit further than that loner. And then finally, level three. This is what I would say is the Messiah level. 
the person who has actually opened themselves up to assist everyone because there's nothing here that they they get it they figured how all this out how all this stuff works and it, they were able to glimpse even into the next stage of things and to see that nothing really dies everything that you think that you lost is still there you see what I mean? So they're able to see that. And then they are also able to come back into the space. So they're not trying to figure out how they're going to get something from you and how this is going to happen and all these different objectives and agendas. And so that gives them that level of power. That's why they reach that Messiah like power, because they are now they are, they're connected to everything. They see everything as being a part of something that they want to assist and something that they want to get to understand this knowledge and this power. So when we have big objectives, we need to make sure that those objectives, if you plan on getting them accomplished, actually include everyone. And if you want to understand the interface in which you would do that through, it would be the Taurus. And as I said, it's everywhere and it's not dead. It is alive. And the opposite of that would be God, pretty much the dead God, because these are all gods of the dead. You can read through the lure if you want to bore yourself with it, but what humanity has latched itself onto, it's just like, it's, it's an all time low. So there only means that there's one direction that we can go, but I ask you specifically to stay on point because what is trying to be robbed from you is basically what gives you the ability to be beyond gods. That is the Taurus field. That is your DNA. And if you forget about that, let folks manipulate that, that are on a destroy mission, that worship a blind, crazy God. That would probably be your lesson. And I would assume that the universe would keep running you through that drill as your parent. The Taurus would keep running you through that drill. You would keep going through that maze. You would keep meeting that Minotaur in the middle of the maze, which is the Taurus. It would be terrible. Just like you see when a person goes through an ayahuasca journey and they just, you know, they came in playing with it. They've done no cleansing at all. It's terrible when they see themselves. That's what that mythos is really about. Some say, well, how is the Torah, ter the Torah, or excuse me, how is the, the Taurus terrible? Because if you read in the Torah, the Torah tells you that the God is terrible. <laughs> But what it's referring to is that a person who is not awake, all of a sudden becoming awakened to their Taurus field now has to see who they really are. And the experience is terrible. <laughs> they're crying, they're, they're scared, they're running, they're screaming. So he was just describing what goes on when a person sees their Taurus for the first time and didn't even know that they had one and then actually really gets to see themselves and what ego has done to them. And this is, as you can see, they roll up the Taurus. This is why, you know, they already in the know. They ain't going to tell you. But the Taurus, as we know, is the Torah. They roll it up even in the scroll just to show you that's what the pattern is. And then they also are hinting to you that your story or the scriptures, the stories are written inside of the Taurus field. So this means that there's already a prophecy. Okay, there's a prediction or a prophecy or projection. So you could read the stars and because you know that the, st the story of the stars continues to play out from beginning to end, if you knew what was going to happen, you would be able to profit from it. What if you knew what the price of Bitcoin was going to be in the next month, you would profit even if it went up or down. You could short it if it was going down or you can bid on it if it's going up. It will be a profit for you. So anybody who knows the future is a profit because anybody who knows the future also knows like, OK, well, with this situation, I'm sure wheat's going to go up. I'm sure soybeans are going to go up. I'm sure X is going to go up. Uh, potash is going to go up. Fertilizers are going to go up because, you know, 25 percent of all of the economy is set off into this country, this country. So, you know, the future, basically that part of it. You may not know everything, but you know certain parts of what's going to happen anyway. You're able to not just make a prediction, but know that that's part of the prophecy. And then you're able to profit. Who doesn't profit? The people who don't even know what's coming. The people who don't even believe in it. 
Don't even believe that there's a system that even tells you the future. But what we're talking about is the Taurus is a time machine. It's anti-gravity. It's zero point. Look at what we're talking about here. It's fourth dimension. What it would look like when you were there, just so you could clue in on this, is that, so I, I would be in this room, right? Fourth dimensional being can be in this room. I'm moving like this. It's, vibra it's vibratory frequency is almost imperceptive unless I'm an empath that it's actually standing here in the room observing everything that's going on and even able to put words in as I'm trying to conceive those words as thoughts in my own mind. You see what I mean? So if you don't have control of your vessel, that's what I was saying before. Like you could see this even in some videos on, on YouTube where they show you the Tibetan masters that or, or, or um, Nigong, Qigong masters that they know how to grab the Taurus field around your body. Like it's like a net and they can pull you with that net. That's just how, and, and what, how are they doing that? Because they have their own field activated. They can interlace in with your field, give it the, 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 uh, the coordinates, et cetera, the juice that it needs, and then pull that field. That's also what healers do. They, they, real healers, they know the field around the person. They can energetically tell where the rip is in the seam. Because also, let's get to some other parts about what happens with the Taurus field when it gets disconnected. So if each of those points of light, if you may, are actually your connection to the Taurus field, especially with the corpus callosum, what happens when they get burned out? The hemispheres start becoming lopsided. And this becomes why we live in two worlds now. Remember, you live in two worlds now. One world, you think you can die. Well, let's put this correct. One world, you can die. The other world, you can't. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the physical world and I'm talking about the dream world. In the physical world, it appears that people can die here. But in the dream world, if you've ever died there before, you'll be back again tomorrow, back again in the same night. So you cannot be killed there. So why are there, is there two different worlds? Because the hemispheres are not matched up. That's why in most people's dreams, they don't really understand what's going on because there's no communication between the two hemispheres. They don't know how to communicate with each other yet. So you're seeing a cucumber walking down the sidewalk getting melted by a, I don't know, a, a soldering iron. And you're like, what the hell does this mean? It's because your hemispheres are mismatched. So then a person comes into the physical reality and mixes this, mixes it up themselves a bit more, the confusion. Jumps into all these different things that are they're being guided to do in daily life. Feel like this, feel like that, believe this, believe that, think they're like this, think they're like that. You should do this, you should do that. As if something is literally talking to the person because what? They're possessed, basically, by an angel. Hopefully it's a good angel. This is as much as humanity at this stage, at this time has been able to figure out about what is actually going on. And as I said before, there are already beings that know this. There are already men and women that know this and practice this. Of course, they wouldn't tell you what was going to allow you to regenerate. Just like Dan Winter said, this is your only chance at immortality, kid. The only thing you really have that belongs to the infinite is the Taurus. So if you don't figure this out, do you pretty much screw your level of immortality over and over again? Because you'll keep running with Hearn the hunter, <laughs> Odin in the wild bear and the wild hunt and the raven and the and all the rest of the symbolism where if I put you in that situation, because some people gravitate towards that, they like they they love it, right? They act like they love it. But you put them in that situation, they're going to be screaming, hollering, in pain and sadness, et cetera, just like any other people who had common sense would be. But yet they can project that on somebody else and want that to happen to somebody else. It's like that same thing that I can remember when I was younger, when I would be hearing about these wars, I will always feel like I was on the U.S.'s side. And I would even feel like a little prideful that we had this military and we could hurt these people and they could never they could never defeat us. But then, you know, after any any real session in the world, you start realizing that how deep that program is and how idiotic it is for you to wish death on women and children. Right. But it's in the Bible. <laughs> Right. A uh, lots of the misinterpretation that's going on with two bull two bull is what the Taurus. Right. Two bowls or two hyper bowls. That's a Taurus. 
So Bible means two Torah, a Taurus. That's all it means. That's why it was the Torah. But then if you don't explain to people, I think the analogy was that Samson uh, uh, slaying uh, 50, uh, uh, 50 Philistines to take their underwear, it means it, it, because he lost the gambling, which is how the, well, he lost a gamble, which is how the Bible states it literally, means that the son is actually gonna go through 50 houses or slay 50 houses before it finally reaches the end of its cycle. If somebody's looking at that literally and believing as a child that this man named Samson who loses all his energy when his hair is cut, which means when the sun enters the low level, the lower parts of the horizon, it doesn't shine as bright or the rays look different. You see what I mean? So, but they'll, they'll push that off. You see what I mean? They'll push that off for 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 1,000 years. And then when you come up and you're like even trying to say to people, hey, look, something is off with this. Why should we even be rejoicing that this God can kill off the firstborn children of an entire culture and then be okay with singing and praising it? You see what I mean? But if you look at the system in itself, this is how everybody was doing. They weren't worshiping Odin because they respected him. They were worshiping Odin because he, they feared him. And who did they fear? The king. The king was sitting behind or the rulers were sitting behind all of these gods that people were so afraid of. They say, oh, they spread death and pestilence through the land. They're not talking about necessarily some phantom or wraith. They're talking about governments and people who have demented mindsets bringing in yet the same thing that they're doing now. When, when have we escaped? When have we got beyond this? It's the same thing even with the whole CV, the word we don't speak of, right? So they poison the whole land and then offer the solution and then sit back like, hey, take it. And then everything's a money scam. Every time you turn the corner, you got to take a test. You got to do this. You got to do that, right? When does it end? It only ends when you get the word that binds them all, the word that controls them all, the Taurus, if you don't learn it now, you, you'll, be, you'll be, what do they say, ripped in it. They call it the Ripper, right? That's the Reaper they're talking about. The Reaper, which is a, which is a curve and then a straight line, right? That's the scythe. So the Reaper is that you reap what you sow. If every life you can be convinced to go through this life unbalanced, basically, to have a good and an evil, a black and a white and to not realize how all these characters are playing in the same game. You got the seven colors, then you got black and white, which are the poles. You got seven colors and two poles. That's nine. Those are the lords of the perfect nine, the mystery of the nine. No matter what you, what you add to it is going to equal nine and any number that you put against it is going to reflect. That is the Taurus. If you look at the number nine, a lot of times people don't, they look at that one part of the number nine, nine plus nine is 18, one plus eight is nine, but they never look at that any number like nine plus five is what? 14, right? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. One plus four is what? Five. Do that with any number. So nine reflects back any number back to itself. So what would it be like to be inside of a nine? It would keep reflecting back to you, you. That would be the magic of the nine. So inside of the matrix, you see yourself through this mirror and the trick is that you perceive yourself as the person that is actually in the mirror. The enlightenment is that you realize that you are everything. And then that's the whole tenure. That's the whole school of the Taurus, right? So in this way, now it's like, it's time to really, really, really teach. Yeah, for all those teachers out there that are actually listening to this message that you have to also make sure that your message is in alignment with the total truth. Because as I said before, that's why I was showing that Atlanta was Atlantis is because you can see like, I, okay, so when I was in Atlanta, right, there were certain things I said, common sense is just common sense. You just got to watch what's going on around you and you got to see how special that you are and then you'll know how special everything is around you. So I was in, in Atlanta, right? So everything was going on in Atlanta during this time. It was right after the Super Bowl. But one of the things that I noticed is that one thing specifically was there was a room that I went into and it seemed like everybody that ended up going into that room, especially that walked on that stage, became somebody within the next 20 years. 
and especially the African American community. And this was the Uptown Comedy Club, starting with at, at this point Chris Tucker, uh, uh, Bruce Bruce, uh, uh, JP, Ti. Everybody was all in that same room. So when I look back and I'm like, what was it about that room? So then you go into uh, to Atlanta and then you notice that pretty much on every single corner, there's a Masonic Lodge. And when I came into my, my awakening, I realized that there was also something weird going on with Atlanta, almost like it was a parallel universe within itself that somehow through the subway station or something there was access to the other Georgia. Then I started learning more after my awakening. I learned that the vein of Stone Mountain, which is a granite vein, runs all the way to Elberton, Georgia, all the way to New York, all the way damn near to the pyramid, that the capstone of the pyramid, which is what you see is removed now, was made from the granite quarry at the same granite vein as Stone Mountain. That's why I say all the courthouses are built all with that same granite from that same vein. But what is that in the ground? They say New York, the reason why the real estate is so expensive is because it's sitting on granite. <laughs> you see what I mean? So what is that? What is it when you got a long vein of a granite element running through the body of an entire uh, state after state after state? It's an organism, it's a vibration, it's a frequency, it's a being, it's a stone, right? And so we got this mythos that's happening right in front of us where when we're in America, and this is not just Atlanta, but just being in America, there's already an initiation taking place because truly, like most folks that think they were bought there as slaves, were all their ancestors were already there in the first place. So we have the entire history of humanity completely rewritten because it can when you start introducing technologies such as changing languages and bringing tubes and TVs in on everybody. So if you can now look at it now and you can think about the movie The Matrix again, you can see then that everybody is plugged into a massive system. We're already united. We're united in the Taurus. And what we're doing is, is we're pretending that we're one of these characters, whether we're gonna be Jack today, who's the Joker, the Jester, Diego, the, uh, uh, Diego, Hako, Jacob, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is all the same name. That's Jack, right? He's the fool, number zero, and also number 22, right? Whether it's going to be the king, whether it's going to be the son who measures the time. So every single thing that you saw in those characters inside of that geometry, which is a personality, can be called forth into the realm. You see the king, what did, what did it say in the scripture? Go tell that fox. Who's that fox that they're talking about? Inu, right? Or Anu, Inu. That's the word in Japanese. That's the king, the fox, right? Then you have Jack, as I mentioned, the joker. You have the queen or magus or mage, even looks like a dress. You see Deuce, right? Deuce Pater, the horn god, right? You see the sun. You see the, that that's the measurements of time. The equilibrium's in the measurement of time, the 12, the six. You see the ace, which is the pyramid with the capstone. You see the stars, right? And then you see the kite and the dart, which are basically the poles, right? Which make up this, this what, Ethereum. No, I'm talking you, but that's the symbolism that they're using. And so the symbolism is all around you. Anybody that is truly initiated into life knows the symbolism. It doesn't actually belong to anyone. But if you don't know what's going on around you, then you actually are really having spells that are holding being casted on you. So we witness here that the hand, you know, this is Stan Tennant's where you got to get credit. You may get sued. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember, Dan Win uh, Stan Tennant sued Dan Winter for talking even about uh, the sacred languages and how it was mapped to the vector of a, uh, of a tetrahedron. But again, yet and still, the knowledge in itself belongs to all of us. So you got people holding patents and copyrights on the ancient knowledge. That's why they tell you, like, the Hebrew language, it, the, what did the Israelites inherit from Kemet? <laughs> the language. <laughs> 
What was the most important thing? What was the Ark of the Covenant? Anything that ever has any power is always going to be the Taurus. The Ark of the Covenant was the Tetragrammaton. It wasn't a physical object. That's why they're saying, oh, it's got birds on each end. Those are the wings of the Taurus. It's got this, these poles on it. That's the shaft in the center. It's inside is magical. It's God. That, that's you in the inside, right? So that's what the symbolism means. And anybody who's initiated knows that. They, there's so many variants of the same thing, right? But the hand is a master variant. It shows you why mantra and mudra go together because mudra is a way for you to move the hand. You'd be like, mm, 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 mm. and then that's it. <laughs> that's it. The only thing that's separating that from working is your own doubts. That's why a master that's initiated doesn't have doubts that what he's doing is working or not because he already knows or she already knows that is connecting to the highest system of knowledge that is available inside of the whole cosmos, period. It's the interconnecting weave. This hand is the puppet master. Okay? The puppet master, meaning that the, the, the hand that actually controls all the strings of how people act and what they do and don't even need to say anything. Nothing needed to be said. Everything is being done. It's like sign language. That's why I said body language. These are silent languages that actually are more powerful than you talking. You got all this stuff to say. That's why I stepped back from it. I was like, yo, I got to get busy even more now. Like, I got to put some action on this. You know, the talk is cheap. When you speak in a cheap ass language, <laughs> Chief ass slave language, basically. That's pretty much what it is. What did they, what does English mean? They wanted an angel man. Angels are servants of who? <laughs> Come on, man. That's why when you accept any of it, you got to accept all of it. And that's what puts people into these crazy positions. Angels are servants of God. So at the end of the day, the moment that you start tapping into those kind of systems is the moment that. Now you're way over your head. And trust me, they love the naive. They love the gullible. They abuse the naive, abuse the gullible. That's their whole thing. While we know that if that had happened to them, they would have never even be on the planet. Like we have to protect our children. We have to protect the innocents because that's the thing that we all need to grow. It all begins in love. The love is innocent in itself. Innocent to what's about to happen, because as you know, and I both know, some of the greatest atrocities that happen in the world also happen behind love. Somebody will kill somebody over not they love the person so much they can't stand to see him with nobody else. We all going <laughs> like what? I thought you loved me. I do <laughs> to death. You see what I mean? So, yeah, there is a yin and a yang force that comes with love. But what we're talking about is we're talking about being original because somebody will love to take you down into that world and to start trying to tell you about everything that happens after love is dead. You see what I mean? And that is not this mindset that we want to live in. But just so you understand just how encrypted the codes are, just so this is all in one body of work, the codes are encrypted in a way where the word defines the sentence. The sentence defines the paragraph. The paragraph defines the entire story. So it's a fractal way of writing. So in the beginning, that statement in the beginning, as you're seeing here, the statement of the beginning of the world contains the essence of how worlds are created. You see what I mean? So if somebody came in, that's why I was saying that's why things are then backed by numbers, because if somebody came in and then tried to add or take away from the system, you cannot do what you cannot add or take away from the scripture. So somebody would be able to check it like a code. And that's what they're saying, that you would be able to roll this, 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 these, these numbers across a torus or roll these letters across a torus, and it would tell you the entire story in its proper order. If you understood the geometry, you would be able to create a, what's, what looks like a ribbon with letters on it and then be able to twine it around a pole of a specific phi dimension and then it would decode the entire meaning of life right there on that pole. 
And that was the same encryption system that many of the militaries used in the Byzantine empires to pass across messages. So they knew about this then. And as I said before, this is the component that creates everlasting life. This is the real everlasting life, but they don't want people to live forever. This is the cult of death that we're talking about with Uten, Woten, Thor, and all the rest of Frigga, and all the rest of these gods from this accursed nation. So again, well, let me correct that. Everybody's growing now, aren't we? That's the whole thing about this. Like you will still find that there are the parents and then there are the children and the children are taken through a process of learning what the parents know. So that's the only path that they'll get. But if you're gonna follow this death God into doom and gloom and grim, along with your family, your friends and everybody else, as if that's okay, then I would have to, to, to ask, maybe you have also become possessed. Have you become possessed? Have you become demented? Have you become distorted? That's the question that we all need to be on point with ourselves about every single day, every time we choose to jump into some of these character-based narratives. Live your life. Your consciousness is made to project, to give you everything. If it keeps getting distorted, somebody keeps trying to write your future, then it's not gonna manifest. That's facts. <laughs> Don't be expecting something that you haven't actually put together and that you haven't really conceived. So I'm gonna take a moment. I'm gonna let uh, members of the tribe, you know, just as we close down, this is, uh, you know, we took an hour even trying to boot up the whole mainframe. Hopefully, you know, everything will be smooth as we get Secret Energy TV going on. Looks like stuff was working. I want to let everybody know, actually, I got a few things here. Let me just, let me finalize here. The one thing is, is that we have to realize that, you know, in terminology that we need to be on point these days because you could easily get inducted into something that is just designed to throw you off for another lifetime. The biggest initiation that you can have is to be born. It is the only initiation that you need. Every time that you initiate, it's like taking a loan from a bank, like initiating a withdrawal. When you're getting initiated and you don't need an initiation, what you're doing is like borrowing money and you don't even know what you're supposed to do with the money. Have you met somebody said, yo, you know, I'm gonna borrow this money. And they be like, so what are you gonna get? I don't even know. They just offer me the money. They don't, and they act like that debt doesn't matter. Initiation is intervention. It's when something is going on so catastrophic in your life or your experience that you need somebody to intervene in this. But that intervention does cost. Like, look at the Taurus system. Look how it's set up. Somebody intervening in on what is going on with you means that there needs to be a balance out of all of those energies. So there's a cost. Our mother covered that cost. I'm glad that that is on this recording today because all these masculine traditions running around trying to initiate everybody, we see you and we know what you're about. It's about that same system of debt, but it's spiritual debt. So let's just demystify this real briefly for our audience because by the way, if any of this that's coming across today, because there may be some fragmentation just because there's a massive body of knowledge here to be revealed about this. If it's something that you want to really understand, remember this is the conclusion of a series that is called a cult, I think it's called uh, advanced occultism inside of the university. So just know that I do the best that I can to bring as much into the space right now but if you want detailed details and to go through that actual process of learning all of that knowledge in this series of exiting the matrix, it is still in sovereignty mentorship. And as we tell people every time, if we can, when they say, well, how can you support? If you could join sovereignty mentorship, it does support us. And it also helps to support you. All the knowledge and the wisdom is there. The tribe is there. And there are many tools and applications that we're building constantly to keep that space with a great level of value, also let you learn how to create more value and uniqueness within yourself. And also if you are dealing with the money issue, how to fix the money issue. 
So this is a total solution, but that's where we're at. So I wanted to deliver just, you know, for this, for the public crowd, uh, the YouTube crowd, et cetera, that in this process of us cracking these codes, we came across something known as the Amagi. And many may, may be familiar with the word Ama because they recognize this word as being mother across many cultures. And it turns out that the Sumerians had actually recorded a word called Amagi, which refers to manumission, which is basically to be free. It's known as the first time the word free was ever written. And what it is a reference to is the restoration of a person's and property to their original status. That is what we're asking for right now. I'm not saying that you're going to go and yell Amagi and initiate yourself into Amagi. All I'm getting you to understand here is that there is not just a concept, but a real awareness that you can be restored back to original status and all these debts from these different oaths, packs, rituals, and initiations are removed through this method. And it's explaining specifically what that method is. So you don't think that is something external, external, go and tattoo this all on your face. <laughs> and then be blaming me when you bring out opposite of the energy all over you and you're oh, seven, oh, you tell me that I'm a gay and now I'm having these nightmares. Because you keep going external, stop. Like, look, it's just telling you what it is. You need to go no further. The initiation, there's nothing that you need. <laughs> you have it all. You have a Taurus. So I can't tell you it's a juju, some weird tree, some weird name, some symbol. I'm telling you, they've been hiding this inside of you, but there is a real awareness of this. So what is that awareness? It's called manumission. It's, that's the exemption of the debt and the obligation from the slavery and the taxation and the punishments. What does it mean? The word originates from the noun ama, which means mother, sometimes with the inclicted dative case marker R. And the principle, the, the, the present participle, damn, just tell me what it is. It means return or restore or to put back thus literally meaning returning to the mother. So this lets you understand as, as an awareness that the masculine tradition, if you may, the penis, the L or whatever, is a system of debt. It's a false system of debt. The world is trying to get you to feel like you owe everybody you need to be like this you need to do that and that that's destroying who you are it's it's enslaving you and what they had already figured out was is the way to fix all of that was to go back through your mother and what is your mother the taurus so when you go back through the donut or exit the matrix you lose all the debt and the distortion you have an absolution of this fake debt that's going on in the matrix, which again, the debt thing is, is gotten at an all time high, but who do we owe? <laughs> Can we just delete the number? Like these are the debt ceiling is like, well, who, who do we owe? Who is this rich? And it's like a mystery, right? Like think about it, like the debt calculator is going up every day and all the debt, the interest we need to, and it's like, uh, uh, Mr. Powell, who do we owe? I mean, can we talk? You know, maybe they'd be like, you know what? You know, we've been on earth for so long. You can imagine like if this was real deal, right? I mean, look, we've been on earth so long together. We all been through a lot. Look, I'm gonna just erase the debt. You know what I mean? But who is this person holding the debt that's spending all this debt and this money, right? So it, it's the entity thing that they got going on, which embeds itself into the mind and the consciousness of the being starts devaluing the being. As we mentioned that this is a corporation that we're talking about here right? Gubernment or gubernatorial. It's a corporation. It's a corpus. It's a fake body, a golem, right? And in this fake body in the golem, it needs humans as resource. But just like any other capitalist corporation, what is it always trying to do? Get them as cheap as possible. Let's buy humans for nothing damn near. Let's use fiat. It doesn't really evaluate at anything. They're still slaves to this corporation and this government, right?
So that's the kind of predatory system that is actually at play and is running rapid every day. And the moment that somebody doesn't want to serve Bess or the beast, right? Bess is a fertility god, right? It's the, the little African dwarf god that's also Buddha. So anytime they don't want to serve, somebody don't want to serve Bess or the beast, what happens? They yank the money supply. They doing that more than ever now. Just to, you know, it's this is it now. It's like you can't buy nor sell Russia. You ain't going to be working with Swift Hermes now. You ain't going to be on that PayPal Hermes flow right now. Even your only fans. You see what I mean? So what do they do? When, 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 when they want to control or throttle in the horse or rein in the horse or pull back the stirrup or whatever you call it, they tighten up on that money. And then people, they, they tap in right then. They look, well, you know, I, I was looking out for everybody, but uh, unfortunately, guys, I, you see what I mean? They get real weird on you when you cut the money supply because it's cutting their energy. So what have they done? They have basically just behind the doors of the person's soul replaced the energetic umbilical cord to the surrogate system, the fake system, right? The, they, and they want people to get encouragement from the fake system. And then they cut them off through the disconnect, through the language and the awareness of who they truly are from the source. And then where are they at? Stranded in an infinite field. Like, remember, Taurus is an infinite field. It never ends. It never begins. Nobody knows what the starting and ending point is of that field. So you're just kind of spiraling out in the Taurus. And who are we? We the tow trucks <laughs> driving around the Taurus looking for our beloved. This all started in, it started in love. Like you wouldn't have to ask anybody if they were a part of the same tribe, whether they would take care of each other and whether they would look out for each other. Now you got folks over here selecting who are they gonna take care of and look out for because they're, they're routed. They don't see themselves all as the same tribe. So that's what we're restoring here. And it's a swim upstream. I will tell you that. Like if you're not seeing me, I'm getting trolled all day. Nasty stuff, weird stuff. You see what I mean? So I got to deflect that. Just kind of keep that out. See how many of the systems we can develop to just block that out. Keep those people out of the space. You got to remember that in spirituality, when you're saying that you want to help people, what you're really saying is hospital. <laughs> and so who are you going to get? Sick people. We have hospitals. You walk into hospital when? When you're sick, they're available to help you and get you better. Well, that's what they're supposed to be doing. We're really doing it. But at times, you know, that infection of these different kind of people who are sick in different ways gets us all routed and divided. Then it starts to corrode the things that we spent so much time putting together. So then you got to start from scratch, quarantine, reclean everything back out, rebuild it again. Like what Ukraine's going to look like when they're finally done with it. Hopefully it doesn't look like Baghdad. So these are real times and they're real people. Like sometimes you can get into this. This is just how distorted TV has made the mind. Sometimes you even be thinking, man, is this even real? Is all of this even real? Or am I just in some kind of back to tank jacked into like some kind of cerebral system that is just projecting all of these images of distortion all around me. And all I need to do is just ignore it all. This is like the advanced conscious plausible deniability because look at the people around you. Look at your mother. Look at if you have anyone else that you love and you will watch them move as their own prime mobiles. They're their own people and they're in this with you. And if you think this is all fake, go jump on a plane and land off in Ukraine right now and see if it's all just fake and on the news. This is very real. This is a high stakes game now we're playing. Our goal is, is to awaken as many beings as possible to themselves. Is it going to happen for everyone? No. It wasn't designed like that. The, the system is not designed for everything to be awake at the same time. You have riped on the tree of life. That's why you're at this phase of the awareness of who you truly are. And then for us, we want to spread that seed as much as possible. We're the funkin' dating components to spread that seed as much as possible so the person can reflect on who they are also and co go through their process of awakening. But guess what? Nobody can cheat. There's no shortcut, unfortunately. 
But what we can do is make the journey and the path straight for your feet by bringing you right to the wisdom and the knowledge and the application rather than taking you off on some path with some golden dons or some Freemasons or some church or, or, or some, some, some fake monks or somebody else who still has yet to just come clean about what the stars are, what the language is, who these gods are, et cetera, et cetera. Just right now, like I did, so clear in a way where all your high and holy soft speaking and all your special foods and bells and twinkling robes and ribbons and shit don't mean anything when bombs start dropping and people are trying to figure out where they're going to take their soul next. So if you're interested <laughs> in coming back to yourself and, and you're still in there, you know how they say with a virus, are you still in there? Is he still in there? If you're still in there, you have graduated. Now, as you entered into this year, I'm sure many of us felt like January 1st, it's like, okay, we had New Year's resolutions and all these different things. And you start feeling like you kind of got off to a late start. You're like, damn, I said I was going to do this, 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 this year. Remember, the year hasn't began. Everything that you've been doing is actually to get you prepared for March the 22nd. The choosing of the Easter for male and female alike is like a wedding. You're going to choose the energy that you choose to be with for the next term. If you mess around with bid and if you mess around with put, then you'll just be gambling and you will lose. The casino is always going to win. The house is always going to win. There's, this knowledge is so cryptic. Look at how police are literally designed in themselves to be, them, they, they are themselves. The subjects in certain ways of this system watch like because you know of course police work for the government so what do they do they eat donuts <laughs> they eat a lot of donuts they run around with these silver stars the sharif who is a sharif a sharif is a magician it's a it's a sharif is basically trapping demons right that's them hard-headed kids you got now running around the street on demon time like they even <laughs> Because the media has got them on a crash dummy mission, right? Here come Taurus Eater. <laughs> so the whole thing is really designed. That's why I say, like, they have their subjects, they have their servants. You go in at a courthouse, everybody there is on the square. They don't even know what the square is most of the time. They don't necessarily even have the aptitude, but they are all a part of that club because they went outside. They were trying to find some external power that's gonna protect them. And then you ask any of them right now, did they find anything? No, they know less than what you know. You be hitting them up by the Taurus now, they be like, what? But they supposed to be the secret society that's holding all the knowledge, you, you see what I mean? So it's time for us to level out, sober up into the reality, see things as they really are, assess our power, stop second guessing ourselves, get out of the debasement where society is trying to devalue you more and more so they can get you for cheap or for free. Tap into your uniqueness. That's why that's so valuable. It's priceless. That's why I'm saying it's non-fungible. <laughs> You are non-fungible. There's only one of you. That's the rarity. That's where the value is. But in society, they don't want to let you know that value and they don't want to let you know how to regenerate. So you run around feeling broke, distorted, and like you, you are, are going to die and afraid of death. So see how that whole vibrational frequency is and you see how all that's broken and shattered to pieces with one awareness of one word that lives inside of us that never comes back void. So if you have a question and you're out there or in there, as we always say, I'm gonna take 30 minutes. I'm gonna do some rapid fire. I'm gonna answer those questions. I'm gonna start off with anybody in the tribe that wants to raise their hand and ask that question. And then I'm gonna pan over to 
uh, the actual chat that's going on on YouTube. And if you have a question in there, you can just type question first. <laughs> Somebody like that donut joke. You could type question first and then hopefully the chat will slow down. Let me see if I can throttle it. So that way uh, I can even get that question on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a moment, take a drink and uh, take some water into my system and get ready to answer those questions. Sean, uh, I know you you on point. Let me uh, go ahead and set the line so that way you got the co-host action. There we go. And uh, and we can go ahead and, and start this process of, um, of question and answer. All right, wholeness to the family. It's been a great build thus far. Let's get it going with our brother Anthony. You got your hand up, fam. Let's get to it. Hold on, let me get you to unmute. Hold on. Oh, let me do that one second. <laughs> okay, there we go. Holding it, Savon. A um, little bit nervous asking this question, but uh, I've been watching you since I was 16, 17. Um, I had a Kundalini awakening. Excuse me. I had a Kundalini awakening like a year and a half ago. And you was talking about how, uh, man, excuse me. You was talking about how basically, you know, um, it's scary, you know, when that when that thing opens up, when that energy opens up, and uh, I can absolutely attest to that. It definitely was scary at first, but uh, I got used to it. Um, you know, I was reading the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and it, it was talking about, you know, peaceful deities that become wrathful, and I think Kundalini is a very wrathful experience in a sense, from a wrathful peace, peacefulness, which I never, you know, those two words combined, I don't really understand, you know, how they did it, but it makes sense. But my question is, um, I noticed a lot of the tribe members out there in Costa Rica, and I know it's my first time in the space, but my question was, um, can I join you guys in Costa Rica? Because, you know, I'm 20 now, uh, and at an age where I should be, you know, trying to pursue all these materialistic and worldly goals, I have absolutely zero interest because of um, this Kundalini awakening. And I just want to, you know, really help, like you said, just to do anything I can, because I realized that a lot of that stuff um, that you're supposed to be chasing is meaningless, like completely, it, it's so impermanent and so temporary. So that was my question. Okay. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous, getting a little choked up, but wholeness. Wholeness. Well, first of all, thank you for, for asking the question. And first of all, I, I will correct that it isn't a uh, majority of the tribe members here in Costa Rica, just so that we are oh, aware. My bad. Tribe, tribe is all over the world, right? <clears throat> and actually, you know, there's a small group here in Costa Rica, but they did just like I did. And that was, you know, they took the leap of faith within themselves and they came into costa rica to see what it can do for them and so far for those that have remained it has been just what it has was for me an opportunity for me to get out of the environment that i was normally in uh surround myself in with a lot of nature because that's what's here some folks can kind of get a little bit bored just because there's not that same type of lifestyle and and then i went from there so what i will always suggest with anything is to uh to, to make plans uh, it was just like I, well, I was definitely working with some divine guidance. So I asked where I should, where I was going to go and I went and regardless if I had enough money or whatever, I was going to go anyway. But what I'm saying is, is it's always good to say, okay, well, I'm going to work towards this. 
and I'm going to set these intentions. I'm going to go to Costa Rica for three weeks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the money together and pay for that trip. And then I'm going to come and see what it's about and trust yourself from there. So it's really not saying, hey, let me throw everything, including my life, into this bag and go over here and 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 meet seven and the rest of the tribe because they're all in, in, in Zion. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's just saying to yourself, look, you know, if I if I any decisions I need to make or any moves that I want to make in my life that I feel that are going to be transformative, that's my divine inspiration that's telling me that. And I'm going to go and fulfill that and see where life takes me. So I want to put it like that because we had to tell another brother, he came here and he actually had got in touch with Andrew and he was like, oh, I'm in Costa Rica, you know, uh, I'm, I'm at the airport, I'm kind of stranded, where's everybody at, where's seven? And, you know, Andrew, so hold on, hold on, man, you know, actually, you're, you're, you're not here for seven. <laughs> you're here for yourself. You know, let's, let's put this into a real perspective here. And, you know, it's about really understanding that there's a process to the growth with yourself and you don't need to rush that process for anyone. And if you feel like that being in another space and doing something else is a better opportunity for you, then all you have to do is set that intention and actually begin to put that into motion and, and make it happen for yourself. And that's what others did that are actually in this space, including Destin and the rest of the family that are actually on the line right now linking up with each other. And then also what we are doing, and it, it is becoming tough, I will tell you that um, the world stage is changing so rapidly, traveling and moving around has become quite difficult. And more than anything, because people are fleeing right now from places that they don't find habitable, uh, including wealthy folks alike, Costa Rica has really become a place that, you know, we, we're, we're even having trouble sometimes finding places that are for rent and places for people to stay because there's just so many people like, yo, I need to get out of where I'm at and get to someplace different that doesn't present war or, you know, uh, super some, some guidelines and some health concerns and all that kind of thing that's happening right now. So follow your heart, follow your heart. And with Kundalini, you know, as the experience goes, it's always with you and it's always speaking why words, words to you as long as you're keeping it balanced. So it's your guide. It's just you. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to say, yeah. Uh, actually, I don't got anything to say. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, wholeness. Keep dialing in. No doubt. Thank you, Anthony. Welcome forward, brother. Great to have you in the space. All right, we got our brother Sammy. That's my great brother right there, wholeness fam. Wholeness, wholeness, fam, giving thanks. Uh, you know, I usually got a profound statement to make and something symbolic to bring forward, which I do, but I think I'm going to save that for some more uh, presentations for tribe. But uh, I do have a question today because in my own studies, you know, like people that I've told my story, like some super synchronistic things with me that happened in uh, my awakening process and my incarceration process was, you know, I went through the Bible and I, uh, I went through um, <clears throat> in, in its entirety. And uh, it was synchronistic in the fact that I, um, you know, I went through, of course, the book of Jericho and how Joshua tore down the temple uh, of Jericho and Joshua, which also is Yeshua, which is Jesus, um, that, uh, I, I got out of the prison to work at a halfway house and do demolition for a company named Jericho. So this came through super synchronistically again, um, cause it had to do with the whole um, X and the first letter of the English language that has everything to do with Shamir. I won't even go into that cause uh, it could get long, but um, I got into uh, Jericho and actually the etymology of Jericho means moon. And in that time, it tells you that the in the biblical time, it's it's fourteen hundred BC that they actually went in. But it's in ten thousand BC. I'm reading the the actual women that went into the excavation, and she said at this time that there this is the pre pottery age, so there was no of course no written language. But again, a tell is a tower is a Taurus. So they were on all the amulets, all the things that they had were of, of this mother goddess. And, but they had some ornaments there and it was a green ax. And again, you know, that like all of this is 
you know, Hermetic and the green stone and um, the emerald tablets. And again, the Shamir, the thorn, the ram in the thicket. Like, so in this, I guess, mother um, matriarch or this older ancient civilization, what is the significance of the green ax? I mean, I, I think I know the answer already. And that's just, you know, us in this, this Kundalini, because like you said, obviously piercing through the reality, not with the language, but of course, the, the, the preceding to the actual word is the, is the thought. So yeah, I just wanted to bring forth something, you know, wholeness. Wholeness. What's up, brother? It's always good to see you. So I, I can only go just directly at the symbol of uh, of the axe itself, because, you know, whatever color the symbol it is, you know, there's only a deeper description there of the original principle. And if you remember, we we kind of went through the the axis, right? And the axis being like the poles themselves that control the shifting movements of the Taurus field. So the axe itself as a symbol is actually the the cutting the basically the 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 cutting and the movement of the field. Let me let me actually uh pull the graphic up. Um it will take me a moment to do that cuz I have to sift through the images, but if you remember we actually went deep onto this axe symbol and because I know we made a graphic, I'm going to go ahead and pull that graphic up. So we could take the next question and then by the time that I get through that, then I'll have that picture up and then we can go ahead and just recap very briefly on that symbolism. All right. Did you want to take a question from YouTube? Sure. It's uh, getting a little wild over there as far as how many questions came in. So, I mean, do you want to are you able to translate any of those questions this way? Yeah, I sure can. Let me grab one real quick. All right, here we go. The sister is coming from I am Stardust. She's asking um, about her son whose spirit is awake when his body is asleep quite often. He started hearing me call him when I haven't. How do I help him? His ears are sensitive to harsh sounds also. Well, I had to breathe in on that one. Um because you know when when we're talking about the variable uh inside of a person's home what you have to to consider is is grounding it's um imperative with all this because remember if our goal is balance and if you're personally saying you're experiencing some type of imbalance then you need to see what that other side of the force is that's what makes it so easy for us to to bring some type of stability into our space and so, you know, if the if the if the direct situation is that he's an empath and and he's perceiving things around him, including, you know, em emissions coming from you as a as a if a, a concern or an action, the best thing that you can do is put him into a space that is consistently clear for him. So at the end of the day, celestial or astral hygiene then just comes into play. And that's just making sure that you're not having things that are in the environment that is counterproductive to his growth. And, you know, just kind of like as children are, are, you feel like that eyes are on you all the time. So you have that additional responsibility to make sure that things around you are, are on point. But when you also have, again, like when you have a lot of spiritual activity, like you may see the child you know, sleepwalking and this kind of thing, you need to still be using elements of grounding, especially when they're going to sleep. Going to sleep itself is is a ritual, right? Uh, so this means that you should prepare for sleep just like you're preparing for anything else. So hit the corners in the room. This means that you're going to use your Palo Santo and Sage to actually clear out the corners of the area that corners of the areas that you're in actually, you know, soothe him, like rub him down with some some oil or, you know, some type of um, um, uh, lavender and these kind of things. And so basically you're and you can do this to yourself. And so you're preparing yourself uh, for the sleep and then also, you know, making sure that you're getting to bed at a proper time. Like if he's going to sleep late, then it's all it's basically where the the part of us that comes out at night and then the part of us that kind of goes to sleep at night they change shifts. This is the tonal and the nawal. So what you could have is 
the shift change not being on point because the child's sleeping or circadian rhythm schedule is off. I wouldn't know because I, I, I would need to ask those questions or get those details. But from just a simple way of looking at things, I would suggest practicing such things with the child in order to mature more of the ability that they have and that they're displaying. Thank you, brother. That was a beautiful expression. So thank you. All right, our fam, Tanya holding the sister. Uh, wholeness, wholeness. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask the question. Uh, <clears throat> my question is, um, with the bold around like the womb and the matrix, I was curious around um, the term Melchizedek. Um, with, uh, <clears throat> so uh, I've been studying the, like the Akashic records and part of the soul gifts um, talks about uh, the Melchizedek priesthood being somebody that has blessing energy, healing energy that sends it out to the world. And obviously within the Catholic church, you got the Melchizedek priesthood and the Mormon church, Melchizedek priesthood. <laughs> and then in, um, it was also in the Gene Keys book I was reading around a being called Melchizedek that may have created the world. And I'm just wondering, I know that's not the world. I was thinking maybe it's the matrix, the fake matrix. <clears throat> and I'm just wondering, you know, because obviously we use these words uh, without actually knowing, uh, you know, and so, yeah, I was just wondering, can you please provide some guidance as to the Melchizedek priesthood of the Melchizedek and yeah the being the Melchizedek and, and I think I was watching a YouTube video uh, a couple of months ago uh, where you were talking about the Melchizedek's archons and stuff so just wondering can you differentiate and how it fits in uh, like am I correct is that like the being that's created like the fake matrix thank you seven thank, thank you, you family thank you uh, okay so let's just Everything that we now go forward with, we can just simply lay it into the knowledge of the Taurus. We know that there is nothing that exists outside of those two symbols that I showed you, which is basically the Shri, and uh, which looks like a convex triangle with the Bowden, uh, the Bowden um, sides. Also, I wish I could maybe get on the board real quick because I wanted to show how um, how some of this mysticism works. Uh oh, did I lose my thing here? Okay, give me one second. I, I need to reboot my my wirecast. Give me one second. Um yeah, let me just do this here. I don't know where that went. <laughs> okay, I kind of just completely lost my screen. There it is. Okay. All right, let me stop this recording and start it again, just in case. Okay, so let me just go to the board real quick here. And I just wanted to bring up some of the obvious right here, one second. Okay, so what, what you notice in, uh, in occult magic is you see this language that's often used in sigils. And uh, it consists of these edges that, that look like, uh, yeah, that can use this area. Okay, so you see these this cross. This was like the German cross, right? Or the iron cross, they call it. You also see this uh, often in, uh, in witchcraft, as they call it. <laughs> and you see this uh, in many of these uh, ancient traditions. Let me see if I can draw it right here, okay? And uh, so it looks pretty much similar to this, right? And this is also uh, hi what hydrogen looks like. And what it is, is, is it's, it's a torus, okay? So if you could imagine that if you needed a tool to be able to get into this field right here, or this part of the field right here, it needs to be shaped just like this. This kind of overlays perfectly into different parts of the field. So what you'll find is that they actually have a, a, a mystical languages that are series of these kind of tubes, if you may, that run into each other. They put them on the wall and what they do is they actually mesh in with the Taurus field 
and then they they allow the energies from that particular symbol in the field to actually become a part of the reality okay so when we when we think about the Melchizedek if we go and we look this up inside of um something like Wikipedia something that's going to give us a definition what we find is is that uh we know Zedek actually means priest put this here Zedek is actually a priest and a Malki just is a word for meaning high or the high priest, okay? And the high priest is always referred to also as Elohim or the El Elyon, the high priest of God, okay? So when we remove the, the esoterics uh, or the exoterics, which is basically the masculine uh, uh, pole, right? The masculine uh, Catholic churches, the the priests uh, that are from the blood bloodline that even Jesus is in that are asking for ten percent of of everybody's ties, and you see. So what you're what you're noticing is, and you can even see this in the imagery, is that what they did was instead of seeing the masculine principle, uh, because the masculine principle, of course, is you know that's that's the L, right? And you have a word a word. And until you add an L to word, it doesn't create the word world. So W O R D and W O R L D. So a L needs to be added in order to create, take a word from just being a word and then bringing it into the world. So in this case, the masculine component of the electron is there is it has the responsibility also of inserting something into a, a external matrix. Right. Because the woman's womb can be seen actually as an internal matrix. That's where the incubation is happening. But then when the child is born, the child is born into this 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 uh, external world, which you can say external is masculine, internal is feminine. So the Melchizedek or the priest of Ha El Yan at its at its true definition just means that center column or shaft or pulsar, which is the pulsar that is actually in the center of of the Taurus. But then when you can think of that from a, a esoteric level, you can also see why somebody would want to stake claim on that and actually begin to act out as a physical or an, ex, or an external version of that component. So they would literally walk around with staffs or rods. As you see, Moses was also a priest of uh, of, of Melchizedek. And so they would they would always have that same type of king symbolism or priest king symbolism. And the priest king symbolism is very exact inside of all the ancient cultures of the role that they play. But it's not seen as the ruler over everybody. It's not seen as an external thing. And so with the external fake ass Melchizedek's, uh, basically they are people that are adapting into this masculine priestcraft but from the dictation of how the masculine priestcraft, so they know nothing about the Taurus, they know nothing about the role that the electron plays within the, within the creation process. They're only interested in rolling out somewhat of the dogmatic theism that surrounds this lure. Uh, and as you can see, the entire stories that have been built, to, built on it and externalized because the Bible is in itself a celestial event, but now taken in a literal way. So it's externalized and then bought in front of us as what we see it now today, which is now you got John Valo Melchizedek. You got a few other people naming themselves Melchizedek. You got these different religious systems that um, work with Merkaba mysticism and some type of mysticism that always leads to angelics. And then now you're back down that same road again because all these roads, roads do lead to Rome. And in this, in this case, specifically to Julius Caesar, uh, who's Jesus Christ, which is the deification of a man or basically thrusting man in front of everyone as the God or the creator of all things, which is inverted. It's an inverse perverse type of perspective. And this is why you get a lot of uh, uh, backwards things happening within the tradition. So the energy is off to me. Uh, it's always been off since the time that I've come into the space of, 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 of teaching spiritual knowledge and then reading through a lot of this new age stuff where they go right into these things because they're also trying to attract a crowd that is not uh, in Christianity, but still not too far from it to where they can relate. So next thing you know, you get uh, um, 
<laughs> Master Moria, Kut Humi, uh, you get uh, 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 the other, Matre you get Buddha Maitreya, you get all these different individuals, which are really basically initiated, generally GHB or, or excuse me, uh, uh, GWB, Great Right Brotherhood initiates, uh, who are in service of still Odin or Orion or the Hunter, and, and bringing in a variant of that same oligarchical control-based system that has been existing throughout the empires that we were discussing today, which is the whole Gothic tradition. So we need to be very clear that this church, uh, uh, the, the church's way of, of jumping onto all the spiritual knowledge, which actually much of it originated in what we would call Ethiopia. This is why when you look at uh, Melchizedek, you'll see that there's a lot in Amharic in rela relation to the king of righteousness, which is the lion faced God, which is solar em a solar emblem in itself right so you basically get the difference between a explanation of this power and creative force that comes into the world and 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 uh, uh is a component of the life-giving force in the world versus some actual man or king who is now ruling through the land as remember this is a priest king so there's a spiritual context because remember we didn't not all kings were priest kings you had kings like odin actually was a priest king too they rituals sorcery this kind of thing was all a part of the odin lore but some of the kings did not have that same lore they were just like more of like hunters warriors this kind of thing so what we have is an introduction into the masculine system of basically uh 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 priest kings that rule over people and that like that actually becomes more easier for people because previous to the priest kings they were just warrior kings now you have introduction of like this spiritual king who literally comes in with uh, all these different uh, ideas of, of, of what people need to do in order to actually be saved. Also, many of these, uh, these priest kings worked with potions and things that poison people, and they would then heal the people with the antidotes that they have. So this is re well documented. Um, the kings often had the technology, if you may, of, uh, of medicines, and uh, they would play on the people like poison the entire water supply, tell everybody that they, uh, especially because remember, kings had to rule entire lands, but the king had to stay in his resident land. So the only way the king could rule over multiple lands after the warrior class thing became pretty much obsolete to be able to do so, you can't have soldiers everywhere ruling people through fear is the adoption of a priest king idea was much more prime because if you were in a far land and all of a sudden the people broke out in boils you can say that they must have offended the king and you could tell them then if if you do xyz and ask for repentance maybe the king would heal you because the king is also basically a priest he's in line with god right and then if they did certain things and they would put the antidote on them or, you know, you take this, you rub this on your skin, rub this salve on your skin. The king is giving you this. You see, so it was a very simplistic but very effective way of ruling over people through their fears, through their even desires in this, in this age that we're in, even of having power. So personally, Melchizedek is in itself just a reference to an electron what it starts coming out to in the external explanation becomes an entire external doctrine that is patriarchic and actually very predatory towards the feminine energy. So that's what you see. Generally, when you see somebody affiliated with something like this, you can be your own judge because they say that the proof of wisdom is within the type of people that it produces. So that's what I have to say about uh, the new Melchizedek high priesthood uh, and the external uh, ventures versus the original meaning of the divine masculine or electric force and in its uh, use in the creative process. Uh, thank you. I, I was curious because you got like Anrita Melchizedek and Christoph Melchizedek and it was just I was given a um, an Akashic record reading a few years ago by my meta medicine mentor and she said um uh, uh, my soul specialization is the Melchizedek priesthood and the explanation I was given was 
uh, that I am somebody that's able to, that knows how to um, send out healing and blessing energy of love, you know, to, to like the world and people. And so like that explanation resonated well, I mean, with me. Well, but sure. just, that, that, that last part, I mean, there shouldn't be any arguments about that. Like we can send love and vibration to the whole world and to, to care about each other more. Whether we, whether it's only the Malchizedek's doing that, or we need to be labeled as a Malchizedek to do that, that will for sure be in question. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> that just doesn't even seem right. But when we, when we understand the word, I, I recommend that you go and look at the Wikipedia entry with what I explained to you today in relation to L. And but I'm saying that just because somebody jumps on a title, I mean we're seeing this a lot, to be honest, and we're seeing we've been seeing this for hundreds of years somebody else jumps on a title or a sigil or a symbol that had a very uh, sound and intact trust and relationship with people. And then they end up getting confused with the symbol or the name versus the people who now are using it. This is the same thing with the Jesus thing. Uh, whoever owns the most PR on Jesus is pretty much the owner of the corporation called Jesus Christ, uh, Melchizedek, any of these terms, I, even Odin, all this stuff doesn't mean the same thing now and how we're using it in context now that it meant when it originally came. And that's why I always like to go to the original because now what you're getting is people that are coming off of the Christian traditions and making up a mixed bag of what they feel like the story is and how they need to divinely anoint everyone. And at the end of the day, this only kind of confuses things more because if you end up kind of going like, okay, I'm going to become a Melchizedek. Like, is there any Melchizedek initiation facilities here in the world? It will be the great white brotherhood. That's Madame Blavatsky. That's Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner was also Hitler's mentor. That's uh, McGregor Mathers, who's also Marshall Mathers or Slim Shady's uh, great grandfather. That's Ellie Esther Crowley. Uh, that's Jack Parsons, who's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. That's pretty much uh, a big chunk of the Nazi party or what ended up remaining to them from them. So you see, so this is not necessarily at the end of the day when you, if you would, if you were actually in the sanctum with them, you would find that you weren't necessarily in the space that you thought you were going to be based on what the sister was saying about the reading from, you know, whatever system that she's supposedly using. So I've always found that very naive people in this will get abused. There is no shield for, for these kind of people. Of course, we are looking to educate people more, but ignorance is still the, oper the operative's way of embedding stuff into our consciousness that has nothing to do with what they're describing it as. And there is a fear a lot of people have. They talk about everything else uh, or talk bad about everything else, but they refuse to talk bad about some of these spiritual systems and these belief systems and these people when really that to me is the most biggest part of life. If we can't get spirituality cleared up and we can't bring the truth into the space, this is the same thing as molestation. You won't talk about how these same Melchizedek priests or say they're Melchizedek priests are actually the most pedophilic people on the planet. But then we'll say, well, no, it's not Melchizedek, it's them. No, it's the whole thing. It's the whole use of the energy when the energy becomes distorted, when it becomes external. So that, that's all I'm saying. So at the end of the day, you know, there's divine masculine energy, positive. Divine masculine energy, negative. So there's not just, when we say divine masculine, like somebody say, oh, there's too much divine masculine in the world. What are you saying? It's like divine masculine positive, divine masculine negative, divine masculine, divine feminine positive, divine feminine negative. So you get that field because that's electronics. And then how those fields start to match up is really is, is dealing with whether that's the external version or whether that's the internal version. And the easiest way that I can explain this to you is, is that there's, there's many energies that when you evoke them externally, they are very destructive. That same energy evoked internally is transformative. So there's literally a contrast anyway to when you try to bring Melchizedek external into the world, it's going to be nothing but torment. It's going to be a lot of everything that you see with the Jesuits. 
But when you are practicing this same electron concept internally, what you need to redefine it, then you need to take it out of this whole priest walking around with robes and, you know, all that kind of stuff and just put it into its original concept. It's actually the creative or the generative or the spark. You see what I mean? Which is still as a definition, a little bit different than the loving and the nurturing and the warming and the surrounding energy. So even the definition that they're giving of the Melchizedek's use is off. So these are the kind of things that I would look at and I wouldn't be afraid to, in a nutshell, call bullshit, you know, just be like, look, man, I, I, I mean, this, <laughs> and cause there's, there's going to be that. And I feel like that, you know, in conclusion that we feel like somehow that none of the spiritual knowledge contains that, that all this stuff out here is here to help us. And everybody has the best intentions for us. And, and that's what I mean by being naive. And that's what kind of gets me like, man, you really do have people that count on other people being like that and then have taken folks to their grave, wasted their entire lives, inducted them into systems and have not, and don't even care, do that and laugh. And because you're not that way, you don't even believe that that could happen. And then sometimes how do they get to us? They get to us through other people who have already fallen into it because they're not checking base. Our spirit is our most precious thing. So what we associate with, because there's a lot to do with affiliations and spirituality, everything is really affiliations. It's like, what do you have next door to you in your Taurus field? So we have to just be on point. We're really understanding what this symbolism is saying and eliminating everything else. That's when you're getting to a master system. So if the system consists of 5,000 different integers of different levels of knowledge and all that stuff, you know, you may need to get a little bit closer to the center where you'll find that all that's been simplified into one word. And that's what we're talking about this evening is that between that, that sh those two shapes, these are the only things that people should really be focusing on at this stage with consciousness, because every single thing else that if it was a real master Melchizedek, blah, 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 they will have to know that. So that's what I, I, I call. So what? Like it was a part of the conversation today, but I totally forgot the construct around it. But it just like means that sometimes we get into this stuff and we realize that just because somebody told you something doesn't mean you really know anything. Like if they say, well, you know, your children are God. And then you'd be like, so what? <laughs> what does that really get you? Like, what does that really mean? Who is God? You see what I mean? So you could start, okay, well, you're, 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 you're bringing the Melchizedek energy. You're going to save the world. So what? What is the Melchizedek energy? What does it mean to save a world? Because at the end of the day, you'll start drilling in this, that stuff and you'll realize, actually, I'm in this loop to loop of words. And I didn't really under, I didn't really get anything from what they told me that I didn't already know. You know what I mean? You could go out, you could spread love. You do that. You share your light, you heal. Now, all of a sudden, Melchizedek want to take credit. You see what I mean? It's like, now he's yeah. going, he wants to jump on it. So it's just like, I, I don't find that to be proper by the way that it's being used throughout history. Because in conclusion, this is also not something that start just started when you got here. So there's a whole history of Melchizedek abuse when you are ready to call it like that. Like when we see destructive gods of the Old Testament killing off entire tribes and justifying like they talk about how here's an example at the end of the Talmud. It was necessary that they, they actually create this story and they show how they create this story and it actually created the racism in the world. And the story goes that Ham walked in on 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 uh, on his father, Noah, naked. And for that was cursed with dark skin, uh, a large uh, sexual member, red eyes and big lips and curly hair. Right. And they show how this is an insertion into the Talmud. But during the time in which it was inserted, it became the ground and the root, the, the ground fundamentals and the root work to creating this racism between uh, Semitic tribes and African tribes. But it wasn't a part of the original scripture. But for that little omission, it then became hundreds of years later in the future. The reason why that certain uh, pastors and ministers were able to justify slavery through that same scripture which was known to be an insertion from a specific group of people. So then when you start trying to represent that in the future, you need to know kind of what you're standing with. And this is how so many people be getting so much like weird energy and baggage all over them 
because you don't even understand the full ramifications sometimes of what these entities are being used to do or what these vibrations are being used to, to do and to cause. And then now, you know, sometimes wanting a title, because we've noticed that many have jumped on the Melchizedek train because they like want this title, like, yeah, I'm a Melchizedek now, just be yourself. You see what I mean? It's like, why does that always have to come in? And then we have to also look at ourselves too, because there's this thing where when we, because let's talk about like this, like a psycho spiritual analytical situation, because we can also see that when we're not uh, uh, parented properly, even like if we're missing parents from our home, our mother and our father, or we're bullied, or we don't get the proper upbringing, things that happen as a child, this basically leaves us prone because most of the society is designed for us to experience some of this stuff. We're prone to actually being quite needy of power by the time we reach our 20s and 30s, so, or, or just validation actually. And so we're just like, we need to be validated. And, and we need to feel like we have have this value. And so we jump on things that's valuable or, or that makes us feel valuable, mainly titles. So this is why in the job, they know these subsets so they can give you, oh, you're you're the uh, you're the now the assistant manager of turning fries. You know what I mean? You're now the in Freemasonry. You're now the 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 the, the grand inquisitor of the eastern realm. Right. And all this means is that you just pay thirty dollars a month now versus fifty dollars a month before. You know what I mean? So I, I, I definitely can see where, you know, this thing has come off the tracks and I would be very on point with these spiritual readers that go out of these books, because the other thing is like when you look at the works that they're reading from, it's like there's no you, it's like a big case of it was them. It was them. It was them. If you ask, where did you get any of this knowledge from? Nobody seems to know the origin of it. Then you go into your etymology, you do your checks, and you actually find out this stuff is not as what you thought it was. So that's all I have to say about that. I, I trust that that makes sense. I'm not a big fan of the Melchizedek, as you can actually see. And it's for obvious reasons, because some have taken that title and have abused it to a point where it does not bear resemblance of what it was initially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I was recognizing joining Tribe, yeah, a year ago this month has been a um, deconditioning experience for me, deprogramming from, uh, yeah, experiencing that abuse from mentors and, you know, um, and me giving my power away. So it's been a um, reclamation of, um, yeah, really coming within. And yeah, it's my new favorite word since joining Tribe March last year was, yeah, inner standing and recognizing that, yes, I have, um, there's been a pattern over the last 20 odd years um, of seeking that validation and value and the, um, yeah, the transformation I'm going through since being in sovereignty mentorship is, um, yeah, validating myself and connecting to that inner power and everything that I've been seeking since a child is all within me. So I just want to say, wholeness and balanced vibrations and thank you for creating the platform and the opportunity to connect with soul family around the world and yeah thank you so much much love much love all the family <laughs> shauna let's go ahead and uh let's keep, keep it going let's uh finalize some things if you got a few final questions for me i'm still uh, looking for that that axe picture <laughs> All right, let's see. We got this question from our sister Noesh. And it's you mentioned 3G, 4G, 5G manipulating the dream space. What are some solutions we can implement to create our own bubble of protection in which we can travel the internal stars without distraction? I mean, at the standard thing with frequencies is is very direct. Um, meaning that frequency is actually a science. It has to be exact because your cell phone works. On frequencies, your your television works on frequencies. The stuff that we're talking on right now is working on frequencies. So, when you want to declutter your space, obviously, you know if you're in a building that has a lot of uh, electromagnetics going on. So let's just talk about it from that angle. Because if you're in nature, then that's that's your obvious solution. So your free solution is to get out in nature and to at least ground out, because that's what ground does. Is it kind of cancels out and grounds in those frequencies. So when you're talking about, let's say, for instance, you're in an apartment building, you're not in nature and, you know, you just everybody got their Wi-Fi in every single apartment, like everybody used to have a dish connect, disc, dish cable on the side of the balcony. 
um, methods that I'm seeing right now. Now, obviously, I, I live in nature. I live in Costa Rica. So it's less of that for me um, is one. I shut it off for sure. Um, that's less. We're looking at building something that uses the antennas on the actual router to cancel out the frequency. So it's like basically because the antenna system on a router is pretty complex. And so the equipment is already there. It just needs to be like reprogrammed. Um, and so it would be like at night you plug it in, it uses the antennas to cancel out the frequencies. And then when you unplug it, because obviously you need to use the internet, then it enables that to be done again. Um, but for, for simple levels, you can think of like the Faraday cage. And so what they've been doing is, is they have now an entire line of clothing that basically shields the body from electromagnetics, uh, all the way from pajamas to uh, uh, beanies and caps to underwear uh, to blankets to sheets, the grounding mat also, right? Because at the end of the day, what you start noticing when there's a high amount of, of, of um, electromagnetic activity is the static electricity and those kind of um, of energies are are abundant and to ground them out if you were grounded or had a grounding strap you would be able to basically neutralize all those static energies so that's why they create these grounding mats um even the even the one that works for somebody who does soldering of electronic parts those are the cheapest ones because they weren't design in the fad of grounding mats but obviously the grounding mat fad has been able to create where they ha now have uh sheets and then the sheets plug they have the the silver thread throughout the entire sheet which creates a a web uh or a net and then they have it where the the actual ground you can either they, they send a huge cord with it and you can either plug that outside into the ground and then run the cord back through the window to the blanket. Or if you don't have access to outside, you put it into the ground on the plug socket. And then now you ground out the frequencies. And when you're in that blanket or that sheet, the frequencies are bouncing off that sheet because you can test it with electro with electromagnetic uh, frequency uh, reader. Um, so this is one way. The other way is when your cell phone is plugged in to, to not have it around you. I'm sure some have seen those videos like you really become a conductor for your cell phone if it's around you and it's plugged in. Uh, obviously, when it's not plugged in, it's still emitting the frequencies, but it's nowhere near when you're around it and it's plugged in. Um, so these are things that you can kind of tighten up inside of your environment to reduce the amount of electrochemical smog. Um, again, like what I was just noticing is that some of the dreams that I was seeing at certain points, it was almost like you could see the tampering. Um, at the end of the day, I think that is still a little bit of speculation. Can we prove that dreams are manipulated with the Wi-Fi? I'm not saying that I can absolutely prove that. I just say that I wouldn't rule that out that all these different bands that happen to be also in the same bands of your head and studying the technology can't be being used to at least at minimum keep that song going in your head or that song you wake up with in the morning and you're like where'd that song come from and it must have been playing on the radio which is the same station so just reducing that around you and checking out some of those items i'm sure you'll find them on the internet maybe somebody will share a link of all of those uh different clothings that actually block those electromagnetics excellent thank you brother um, so let's go to our fam, Jim Holness. And the question is, do you have any additional preparation recommendations in regards to the energy surrounding March 22nd? Absolutely. Like um, what I've been doing is, is that, I, you know, this year is every all the words, say all the wires, all the chips. Everything is on this year for me. I'm not looking at 2023 right now. I'm looking at 2022 as being the most impacting year ever. And what I'm doing is, is I'm just staying on point. I'm staying clear. I'm not getting distracted and I'm staying out of the patterns. So if there's anything that I can say is, you know, really watch the patterns. And when you see yourself going down that same route again and going through that same pattern, just choose to switch the pattern. Even if it's not like in your inclination, just come in with another override in your conscious. Like, you know what? I'm not going to go down that same route uh, because just like any full moon or on the new moon now, 
right now is where it all starts. You're getting off to a really good start. It starts right around new moon and everything kind of builds. So it's not like something that you just do that one day. It's something that you're doing that leads up to that point. I also like to uh, personally, because when you're on, when you're on point, synchronicity really takes you through the process. So it's not something that you really have to try hard to do. Like I'm just going to, you know, um, set up some mega ritual for the next 22 days. Will you benefit? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you'd be even more on point, but I'm also not saying that you got to, how can I put this, that you got to like over obsess on this and like try to figure out how you're going to do all these things before the 22nd. It should be a real natural flow with what you have going on, with you being mindful of what you are setting yourself up for. So if you can imagine uh, if you were to meet your significant other, the energy that is um, so you, if you have things that you want to accomplish in life and you feel like something is missing from that beside, you know, money and these kind of things that you could think of the surface levels, but the, the real energy, I just need this. That's your that's your mate. So whatever you would perceive that 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 mate would like or would attract that mate, then you need to be on point now. So this is very similar to, let's say, in the male's world. We may see a woman that we like. Um, maybe we meet her at the job. She just starts working there. So this is the first day. So then the courtship process happens. This is the best word, courtship, where you're literally really watching what you're doing because you don't want to send off the wrong send signals and message that could decrease uh, your ability to be able to engage with this person on a deeper level. So you're looking at March 22nd like that. And you're looking at these days leading up to it to where if you find yourself in an energy and a vibration that you this energy that you're expecting to attract would be turned off by, then you already know that you're in that same pattern. That's like a big turn off to the energy that's a progressive for you. Other times you may think it's haphazard, like to even try to to fix this or to do anything about it. Uh, meaning that you'd be like, well, why should I try to straighten myself up now? So why should I try to get my abs back now? <laughs> right. And the reason is, is because the timing uh, time is everything in this space because it, it maps the vectors. So we march forward like today. We marched first uh, just just a few days ago. All the tribe that is here in Costa Rica met. That was how we began things. The next day was the new moon. Now we're here on March 4th. So we're marching forward. We're here broadcasting on YouTube to the rest of the tribe and everything. You know, we got the crescendo of the message. Hopefully, you know, there was a little fragmentations earlier, but there was the crescendo of this. So this is how things are beginning. So all you have to do is just maintain the momentum, right? And and remove the obstacles and things from your path that will try to rob the energy or try to make the times insignificant or dedicate the energy of the time to something else that does not serve you. Hence why they're cooking up the big warfare right now, because it's the big distraction. But as we know, every time these are not the same years, we're getting closer and closer to something. That's why the numerical synchronicities are registering as they are. So this March 22nd choosing of the Aster will really be like no other. So it's not the time for you to go into the same pattern like, oh, here we go with Easter again. I'm going to go hang out with grandma and, you know, <laughs> do, well, nothing wrong with hanging out with grandma. But, you know, basically I'm going to do these Easter eggs and blah, blah, blah. And, and it's just like and you just kind of get caught up in that. This is just another of the same thing. This is an extreme opportunity right now uh, for you to, to dial in the energy that actually may make your life different from either being extremely miserable uh, to actually thriving. Right. Because we can kind of see this vista opening up and that and that, again, it, it's all dependent on you, all dependent on your awareness of this knowledge and your application with that knowledge within yourself. But we can see that there's going to be some more rug pulling happening. Rug pulling is happening all around us. In the reality, people are getting super shocked by what's going on. Like, I mean, it's just it's at unprecedented levels, but unprecedented levels. But many of us are not experiencing any of that. And we just want to make sure that things stay that way. And that's why the Magus is not so much interested, again, at trying to make a million dollars, more so than just keeping things the way that they are. If, if you're balanced already, all you're trying to do is keep the balance. So you don't want to go and do something that's going to create the flux that can throw everything off of balance. So that's what this is about. The advice that I would give to you is treat it like you're in a courtship. Somebody asked in the chat, 
Hong Kong, what is March 22nd? And once again, I'll just reiterate that March 22nd is the day of the choosing of the Easter. And that's, look on your calendar, that's the Easter time. And that's very important because it's also the time that from the ecliptic of the sun, that it starts off uh, in, in Aries, which is at the top of your head. And then from there, it runs through its course or its Anu or cycle through the rest of your body. Uh, but this one, though, is going to be a little bit different than all the other ones because we're at such a high magnitude and intensity. So it does mean that if you did have some pretty far-fetched Hail Mary style goals, that this is actually the energy that would be necessary to do it. Just as a lot of folks are going to get wrecked on this energy because it's, it's so strong and so potent. It's not really playing with us. And that's also what the brother was saying earlier about, you know, his Kundalini experience. You get into Kundalini and it's pretty serious because it's a grandparent. You know how you like when you're around your grandparents, everybody's like super serious. So it's the same thing. Like when you the closer you get to the truth, it, it gets really serious in the space. And then you start learning how to adapt that maturity and you take on the mantle. So, you know, this is that preparation process for it is, you know, do designate the seriousness around certain times like what we're in, because after all, like, you know, flesh eating viruses, parasites, uh, pandemics and warfare and war wars and all that kind of stuff it are indicators, right? Versus if we're boiling frogs, we don't really like see that as different than any other time. And, and these are very different times. So I trust that that makes it very clear on why we should be on point uh, and stay on point uh, as we go forward. No doubt, man. Great build this evening. I think that should be it for us, it. man. All right, we so I have to hit my, my, my man's back up with the axe imagery uh, on, on, the, on the DMs. I also like to, uh, to say to the tribe, you know, there, there's, a, there's a special connection that we all share, and it's immense. And the more that we get clear about it ourselves, the more that we're able to touch into the spaces that we truly exist in. Uh, so for me, the advent of just this crystallization of awareness of how the whole thing works is a big benchmark for secret energy. I feel like that we've officially reached layer one, if you may, of secret energy. We have a curriculum. Uh, we have our tribe, of course. Uh, we have our platform. We have our technologies. And we're about to emerge into a space that is going to give us the resources necessary to scale. It's not going to only do that for just me and the team. And it's also going to do that for the rest of the tribe. And what we're going to continue to do is we're going to continue to, to bring all of our knowledge and wisdom and intelligence into any space and to make sure that it's balanced and harmonic, the things that we do. And we feel like as long as we're doing that, then we can continue to enjoy the benefits of this balance. Um, and we would like to bring that awareness to more people. And so as Secret Energy TV starts, we're going to be featuring many of not only the creatives that are inside the platform, but we're also going to be reaching out to others that have created something and done things that want to display their works, their arts onto the channel. Uh, we're also going to get a little bit more intrinsic with certain things like the diet, cooking, and also motivation, comedy, and entertainment, you know, just having your videos and your conscious music, you know, your nighttime frequencies, those kind of things, because I feel like that could be good assistance in these times where sometimes we sit in a moment and we like want to watch something or see something and we have our own station now so we can turn it on and we can enjoy. Um, as you know, we have a real fork in the road happening financially. Uh, I definitely see that now more and more. I spoke about it. If you go and look at even Origins Tetragrammaton, which was shot three years ago, I actually spoke on every single thing that we're experiencing now. And so what I would like to say is, is that we need to be profiting on these prophecies also, meaning that some of this stuff is just common sense of what's going to roll out. But if we're not prepared for it, we're not only not benefiting from it, we're also kind of suffering when it happens. So I would really like us to get a little bit ahead of the curve here and stop waiting on the next thing to happen to figure out how we're going to adjust to it. And so I believe that there is a, a rift happening, uh, allies and axis in this case. And with what that rift is going to create is going to create where there's two different sides of the monetary system. Um, one of those sides will be for sure more decentralized than the other. But I feel like that if we can't emerge into these spaces, we may have a little bit of trouble in the future trying to figure out how we're going to financially stabilize ourselves. And some may also be experiencing that now. 
So I just wanted to let everybody know that we're, we're, we're well aware of this. And we're also vets in the, in the technical space and also the techno spiritual space. So meaning that we know about both of those worlds. This is a multidisciplinary at Secret Energy. So we want to create the applications that make it possible uh, for us to continue to go forward and uh, in consideration to what's happening. Also, we want to continue to push forward sovereignty, like it's very important for us not to keep plunging ourselves deeper and deeper into debt. Like we really are looking for that Amagi, which is basically being able to put ourselves back into the original state and to go forth from there in love and honor and in connection and enjoy the time that we do have here on Earth. It's an extreme gift. Uh, in conclusion, they say that this word actually means beautiful. Um, the creation, uh, well, the original words for earth, the new word earth actually means dirt. So you can imagine, you know, it's kind of got degraded from there a little bit, or, you know, it's just dust, uh, but we're more than dust and uh, everything can come from where we're at. So I just wanted to send wholeness and balance vibrations to everyone and let you know that secret energy is alive and kicking. We have some big plans for this year. We're looking to roll out our white paper on March the 22nd. So look out for that. And we're just going to keep doing what we do, refining who we are and connecting and just keeping it real, especially in these times. Wholeness. I'm going to set the lines. If you do want to mute yourself, say wholeness to the world, then you can. Wholeness, son, I love you so much. Wholeness, wholeness family. Wholeness, wholeness moms. Wholeness, wholeness dress. Wholeness drop. Thank you so much. Thank you, tribe. Wholeness tribe. Love you all. Love you too. Wholeness. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Keep coming back. Powerful one, yeah. <laughs> Wholeness tribe. Tonight was my first night, and uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say I'm uh, I'm very happy to be here and in here with you guys. So thank you, and uh, to you seven. Uh, I got the greatest love in my heart for what you're doing. You know, uh, to bring to help help some of us get up. So thank you very much. Wholeness. That. That's the drive that keeps me going. Thanks so much to all the pillars. Thank you so much, Sean. I see you, Curtis. You know, thanks to all those that have have been in this. Yeah, Saclinda, Corinda, everybody. You know, there's so many of us here. You know, enduring all of this together. Like I, I always say that the one of the most unique things about Secret Energy is that we are here to deal with it all. Like very, you will find very few places that will be able to take you through the entire process and deal with you as you're going through the process. And it's a real thing. So we've had to kind of deal with it for better or for worse. And uh, we're weathered it at this point. So we're in it to win it. And we're just looking forward to empowering more and more of us who are all unique keys to unlocking these very mystical doors that exist within us all. So thank you so much again for just the, to represent and, and just being yourself and holding the vibration. Okay, thanks. Bird, we still here. <laughs> <laughs> still here, bro. Thank you. All right, family. Holdness. Have a great one. Have a great one. Man, love. Holdness and vibration and balance.